Hello, uh, welcome to Reaper Errant on Reaper Miniatures channel. Uh, I know some people out there because I hear them talking, so or I see them. I don't. When I read, I hear. Uh, so it's nice to see you all out there watching. We're going to play some Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition. Uh, my name is Frank. I will be the DM, and we'll do a little recap. But before we do that. I, I can't look you in the eye, apparently. I have to look over here and look over here. Before we do the recap, uh, I'm going to let everybody introduce themselves and who they're playing, and uh, then we'll, we'll find out where we're going to start from where we left off. I'm going to start in the traditional square <laughs> with Bobby. Hello again. Welcome and good evening. My name is Bobby Jackson. I'm be playing... Pujol, the mighty and indomitable gnome bard, armed with my trusty war harp and positive mental attitude. And I'm particularly um, jolly this evening, if gnomes are jolly, because uh, we're shy and elf, which is always good for gnomes. <laughs> There's no one with a, an unpositive mental attitude. That's right. The sun is shining. Thank you, Gene. Hi, everybody. I'm Gene Van Horn. I'll be playing Gooseneck, the lizard folk barbarian, the uh, more mighty and more abdominable. Sorry, I had to throw that in for Proctor. And uh, I'm ready to whackety whack with my axe. Thank you. Jason. I'm Jason Weeby. I'm playing Corncob Thunder Bludgeon, a cleric of ill repute. Oh, okay. Rhonda. Uh, I'm Rhonda Bender. I'm playing Fathom, a tiefling magic user, and he has neither abs nor positive attitude. <laughs> okay. All right. Jen. I'm Jen. I'm playing K Nimblewit, a human rogue. No catchphrase. <laughs> That's a catchphrase in itself, though. Uh. I thought your catchphrase was well, better than being now, a door. isn't it? Yeah. Hashtag better than being a door. That? I thought your catchphrase you was know? it's better than being a door. No, it's not necessarily better than being a door. <laughs> I feel like some days the jury's out on that one. <laughs> kind of depends on what we're doing. Oh, someone in chat would like to know the name of the cat behind your head. Who's staring uh, off the distance at something name. really interesting is happening. Yeah, yeah, that cat is named Luther, and I'm not sure what she's staring at. She's staring at a blank wall, like cats do sometimes. Mm, yeah, it always makes me suspicious, though. Huh, so. uh, uh, let's see. Um, thank you, Reaper Miniatures, for allowing us to have this game on here and for the for all the miniatures. <laughs> These are awesome. Also, uh, thank you, Sirenscape, for the background and ambient music that uh, you will hear uh, probably in the background. And uh, thank you, Justin, behind the scenes, for uh, being uh, our control operator back there switching cameras and stuff. Uh, this is just an old-fashioned forever night. Um, so let me do a quick rundown which I hope that everybody, after I mention these things, will then weigh in on what they're actually planning on doing next and correct any inconsistencies in my, my recap. But two weeks ago when we played, they had uh, gone off through the forest, or through the jungle, from the port town um, that they had uh, gone into. And... The overall intent, of course, is to, well, I don't know if that's true, but one of the one of the things they're trying to do is to get a few more people to hire on to the ship. And um, there's a tent city outside of town that they think they can do that in. Uh, outside of town, there was a hot springs that they visited, met some people, had a little dip, some of them did, uh, helped, uh, a, I guess not, but had a little dip, looked around, uh, noticed some disturbances, headed over to the uh, tent camp, uh, because that's where the two people managing the hot springs were going to go for the evening, 
And on the way over there, we're accosted by a giant Tyrannosaurus Rex, uh, which Pugil promptly turned into a cute, if not entirely cuddly, partly pokey hedgehog. And they decided to stuff said hedgehog into a volcanic vent in hopes that they would come out like Play-Doh goo. Um, they came, he came out more with his head above the ground and they mercy killed him. Um, it sounds so normal when you recap it like that. <laughs> uh, and there was some debate about how they were going to do that. Anyways, I think that's how we ended it. Uh, but they're still heading towards the tent camp. There was some, that's right. I, one of the important things that drew them also to this camp is two slods that were posing as people on their ship quite a few episodes ago were originally uh, brought onto the ship from this port. And they stayed in this camp a while, and they're perhaps going to spend some time investigating them here. I think that's probably an important point, too. What did I miss, and uh, what are you planning on doing? Let me get some jungle sounds going while you're talking about that. Is the what did I miss thing a quiz? I got nothing. <laughs> did, did, did I cover everything relevant to all of you? Important points. Sure. For me, anyway. So. Absolutely. Yeah. So then the next part is what are you doing? What, what are your plans to do now? Well, the Margaret had offered to show us the tent that the slot people stayed in. Okay. So she's recovered what she could of the stew. Uh, she's been carrying it along. She dropped it when you were first uh, uh, beset upon by the giant reptile. Um, and she comes into camp. We have some stew, and everybody greets her normally. And uh, she heads right to oh, the benches that I thought I had out here. Well, we'll just put it by the fire at the moment. And there's a nice long fire. There's a few people milling about at the moment. Oh, Nabran's not there. What am I going to do? Abran's going to scout the woods, perhaps. Well, let's just drag him along for the hell of it. <laughs> sure. I'll be glad good. to play Abran. Well, I was going <laughs> to say Justin should play Abran. Oh. That was <laughs> you could get him back for all those times. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, Proctor is bad with fireballs. Is it Justin worse with fireballs? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Well, he was... I say we find out. <laughs> <laughs> we have a chance to to do some empirical research. I don't know if I want to put Justin on the spot. Uh... <laughs> no, no, normally I would, but I uh, I don't feel up to it tonight. Unfortunately. Okay. Well, let's is. tell Proctor that you did and did all kinds of horrible things to his character and made fun you, of him. You killed okay Abran. You, you wounded yeah. Abran. You, you used all his fireballs and uh, you broke his <laughs> magic bow. I'm good with that. Yes. Perfect. I like, I like Rhonda's plan. <laughs> I do too. Oh, poor Michael. Now, now he has an eye patch and a peg leg. <laughs> You'll fit right in Except on the boat. Until he got polymorphed into a hedgehog. Ooh, mm -hmm. some sort of spell that gave him a big old beer belly. There you go. <laughs> he's pregnant. Don't he's worry. Pregnant he's pregnant by the fungus queen. He's still got the abs, though. Yeah, but they're not in the same place anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're kind of off to the side. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you reach in. There's a little bit of a flurry act, act, of activity. Uh, make some insight checks, everyone, because I imagine uh, you're going to get some immediate impressions from people looking so at you as you come. We're in the slod tent now. Is that correct? No, no, no. First, uh, no. she's dropping the stew off at this table in the center of town. She'll take okay, you there. Okay, so we're walking wanna... into the camp. Yeah, she doesn't want to just the town. Flip the stew around everywhere with her. Holy cow. Um, Pugil, what was your uh, 
insight? Well, it, we're 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 fathoming it tonight. It's a three. Is that a verb? Oh, okay. okay. Is it? Don't you get your pass? It's more of a player than the character. It's not really the character. It's me. Okay, we're bendering it. <laughs> yeah, you're bendering. Um. Okay, a three. Uh. How about goose? Well, I got. I got a two, but my passive is fourteen. Don't we do passives? Oh, my, pa if we, if we're, my passive we're inside lower? is eleven. Uh, yeah, you can do passives. So, uh, let me know if um. I rolled a two. Passive is fourteen. Yeah, just I'll let, let you decide. <laughs> let me know. Let me know if your passive being the lowest. If your roll is greater, just give me the highest of the two. Uh, Corn cob, what did you roll? I also rolled a two, but I got a six because of my bonuses. So I'll be taking the 14. Okay. What about you, Fathom? I got a 16. You know, I oh, my gosh. Okay. I'm 11 and passive. What the, what? I didn't bender it. So, somebody clipped that. <laughs> <laughs> bender didn't bender it. And what about uh, Kay's insight? Uh, I've rolled a 16 and my passive is 17. Okay. So we have, so for those, for those 10 and above, um, you know, you're getting some people looking at you, you're strangers here, you've never been here. You're not entirely sure, uh, but it's not, no aggression or hostility, but not open arms. For 15 and higher, uh, same thing, but there are a couple people who seem to be more interested in, in how, well, you do look like an adventuring party. You're armed. Um, no one comes in here necessarily with uh, uh, the, who looks like you uh, with purpose other than to cause trouble or to find somebody, ask questions, pull people Black out. Black taxes. Yeah, there's, there's, there, uh, there's some, while not They're open hostility, up. there's we some can see them already. mistrust yeah, happening already. They're not usually what they Quick, would expect. Quick, Pujol, play a song. Put them in a good mood. Win their trust for us. That's a good idea. Uh, I will, um, let's see. I'm not going to do anything formal, but I will be. I will um, begin busking in a in a um, obsequious fashion. Okay, make a performance check, Pugil. As you're you're going to go about this. Twenty nine. Ooh, wow, man! And your instrument of choice at the moment? My war harp, of course. Okay. I mean, I know you're multi-talented, so you're not limited. Yes, indeed. Well, the harp is a little. Well, I don't know. What would be more party-ish? The bass woodwind sound of the shalm, or the tinkling higher notes of the harp? Well, let's uh, let's look at the room. Oh, don't busk too hard. I don't know how much they have extra to throw in your hat. <laughs> they, I'll take whatever uh, they're offering. So what they're offering is their uh, uh, warm shoulder instead of their cold shoulder. Ah, very good. Good enough. So there's... there's well, let's there's, see if we... You know, maybe we I, can get a party started. Tap maybe. a keg. I'll climb up on the table and get things rolling. <laughs> there's a there's a tightening of people as they sort of begin to to gather around Pugil. There's the fire here. There's the harpist here. A lot of um, suddenly, you know, you actually see some children come out who you did not note in the beginning, uh, which was not necessarily what you expected. But quite a few, um, quite a few people are coming out, and in fact, Gooseneck, there's a couple of chickens come wandering about <laughs> your feet, <laughs> hop up on the bench Chicken. over there. Oh, well, very good. I will keep my Im improvised lyrics PG. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so everyone seems to be enjoying that. While Pugil is entertaining everybody, uh, I'm just going to go around sort of to get a general intent what you want to do. Um, Gooseneck, is there something in particular? There's some time. Uh... Uh, if I didn't make it clear, I'm sorry. Margaret sort of setting down soup, kind of handing it out. She, you do get the impression she's trying to move through it so she can do what she's promised you, but there's clearly going to be a little bit of time while she's doing this. Okay. Well, I will uh, I'll ask Margaret if she'd like some help passing out the soup and uh, see if she wants, wants any help. Oh, uh, of course. Yes. Uh, uh, I'll give you the bowls. Just make sure everyone's got one. And she begins to fill them I'll and instead start, of her handing them out. I'll start passing them out. Okay. Keeping an eye on those chickens. Mm, chicken. <laughs> All right. Uh, corn cob. Uh, I'm just going to kind of keep my eye on the crowd and use my background as a smuggler to kind of uh, look for people that might be slightly outstanding in some way. Okay, so uh, make a rolled perception check. Uh, 18 or 22. Okay. You, you see a couple of people you think, hmm, that looks like someone who would move items without question from one location to another. Okay. So you've, you've kind of honed in on somebody. Um, yeah. Might do that. Okay. Uh, Fathom, what do you want to do? Um, I'd like to kind of just keep my ear to the ground and see if anyone's talking about that. I've forgotten his name. The guy who's trying to broker the hiring of remembers Ventor, right um Ventor. Ventor. yeah i'm also looking out for the ladies we spoke to in the bar who were unhappy about Ventor. i'm basically trying to see if anyone else is complaining but or if they're being complimentary i guess that's important to know too if they think Ventor is the best okay um just in yes. general you don't see him feeling. and you don't hear his name on anybody's tongues in conversation immediately at least uh, but I'll keep that in mind as you're looking around. Hey, sure. What are you doing? I'm gonna put down the goggles and just give kind of the whole campsite a once over from where I am. See if anything stands out. Okay. Okay. Any more shape change demons or anything like that? Yeah, so you don't see anything like that. One of the tents <clears throat> is definitely magical. Uh, you can keep, keep sort of staring at it to figure out what kind of magic. Uh, if you, well, after you scan the rest of it. And when you do, I imagine you would probably try to note what kind of magic it is. Uh, it, you feel like um, uh, ooh, make an arcana check. Ten. Ten. Okay. So you've seen this kind of magic before, usually on things like um, bags of holding, uh, the quiver once you saw, items that are either store in smaller spaces than they should reasonably be able to store, or hold more than they should reasonably be able to hold. So it might be a bigger on the inside kind of tent. It could be. could also be a, oh, yeah. a rolls up smaller than it ever possibly should kind of tent. It's pavilion sized. Um, 
it's that multicolored tent there in the background. Um, and it's quite large, so I'm not sure one way or the other for sure, but it is already pretty large. Okay. All right. Let's see. If I look at... Sorry, going through all this. Okay. Um, it, it, during this time, I think you would have had, if you wanted to get up and approach them, corn cob, you could have approached the person that looks like that. What is is your intent to do that, or you just want to feel them out I'll, and relax? Yeah, I'll bit? I'll kind of saunter up and and just kind of give them a nod, like a knowing nod. Okay. Say, uh, what's happening? How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? Man? Well, I'm not going to do that like some Goomba. <laughs> Is that the official <laughs> smuggler greeting? <laughs> the, the official. Hey, baby. <laughs> well, I'm not sure they're smugglers or anything. I just, they, they look like they might know what's going on if there's anything going on. Yeah. So yeah, you you walk up, you nod. They they uh, they nod. They take a look at you. Your otter pants, very. I mean, you're you're starting to look like a, a sailor almost. Not quite. You're, you're getting there. Um, and before you have a chance, almost. Uh, she speaks kind of a. It's um, her accent. What languages do you speak, Corn Cobb? Wow, I think I just speak Dwarvish and Common. I don't think I have any okay. proficiencies in anything else. And uh, in that case, make a make a disadvantaged history check. A disadvantaged history check. Disadvantage. Okay. So a six. Okay. Uh, you can't quite place the accent, um, but he says, hey, so uh, <clears throat> are you sailing then? Yeah, we're doing a little sailing. Come to find some goods or some labor? Well, actually, we've been, uh, we're kind of just mapping out stuff at the moment, just kind of surveying the, the area and looking around. More on a research mission than a trade mission. Uh, but not here. Oh, your royal is uh, well established. No, our, our, ship is, our ship is currently undergoing maintenance, so we're just taking in the sights. Ah, uh, he. Well, uh, seem like an interesting fellow, though. So. Oh, I'm can... very interesting. Once you get to know me, sure. Well, let's have a chat then. But aren't we all? Well, perhaps over some wine. Something interesting. Now that sounds that now you're talking my language. <laughs> Excellent. Then uh, I know that they have a fresh cask in there. And we can go have a seat. Soup is served for some, if not for me, yet, uh, or yourself. But your friend seems to be handing it out. I'm oh. <clears throat> interested in hearing your story. Perhaps over a glass of wine, it'll make it interesting, and I can share mine. And That sounds good. Would you mind if a friend joined us? No, not at all. All right, I'll I'll see if I can get the lizard man's attention. Okay, uh, it, it's pretty easy since Gooseneck is actually actively looking for people to give bowls of stew to. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want to go have some wine with these guys? Sure, I'll bring some stew too. Sounds great. They were just talking about how it wasn't their turn to get served yet, so. <laughs> All right, so you, uh, you, 
her gooseneck, head over, and uh, over there you find another person, um, which I have right somewhere here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You head over. Uh, so all of the rest of you could probably see um, Corn cob, gooseneck, sort of start a conversation off, head off elsewhere. You're not entirely sure necessarily what they're doing, but you know they're up to up to whatever you would expect. You, Joel, you're playing a wonderful song. Uh, knowing what you know now, fathom what what. What are you going to do? What are, what are your actions? Um, well, I guess I'll wait till Margaret's finished and then ask her about the tent again. Okay. Um, that probably gives Kay a little more time. Kay, are you going to do anything in, during uh, uh, while this is happening? Uh, no, I'm also going to wait for Margaret to finish and to go check out the tent. Okay. I mean, I can uh, take over for gooseneck helping too. I don't mind to handle bulls. Okay, you can do that. That helps speed it along, and um... also trying to seem friendly and innocuous and whatnot. Of course. Between you all, you are able to hand out bowls, and Margaret catches breath. Okay. And she then she kind of looks around, sees that uh, corn cob and gooseneck have gone off. Pugil's starting to play. Um, Abran's carving a stick or something over there, and looks at you two and says, "Well, uh, then uh, I guess we're not ready to go yet, but but uh, uh, I'm at your disposal." <clears throat> Do you think we need to wait for them, Kay? No, I think we can go look. Okay. Well, then um, let's let's go. We can we can look at their respective uh, quarters. Uh, I, as I said, they're they're occupied now by someone else. I'll just make sure it's okay that we go in and look around a little bit, but. Uh, I'll be right there. It's over there. There's a red tent. And she points. And you can see a, a red tent. It looks like, yeah, not. It's just slightly bigger than a pup tent, kind of. You might be able to stand up in it and uh, walk through. If you were, I don't know how tall. Uh, I, I think at both of your heights, I don't think you're exceedingly tall. You probably could stand up in it, duck to get through the door. and um, But, you know, a taller person would have to kind of hunch down a little bit to get into it. Um, Margaret, before we get there, actually, I'm a little curious. How do how does the community decide who has what accommodations here? Uh, well, it, uh, we, um, we, to be honest, we just distribute what's available. So when the brothers left, uh, it was a while that the tents uh, you know, we, we had no one sleeping on bed rolls in the open air, which we do occasionally. Maybe they weave some huh, uh, leaves and things above them, but, but, but we, we didn't have anybody. And after a, a few weeks, you know, some folk came along and, and we offered them their tents. And uh, just after that, you can see over there, there's, there's bed rolls on the ground, but they've got a little cover into the trees and if somebody leaves the tents they'll move into the tents we just sort of first come first serve i guess and those who've been here the longest do have better accommodations but but uh it's almost like a permanent home for them that makes sense all right so she stops and she says i'll i'll, I'll go I'll go check if you don't mind. I'll, um, and she kind of 
goes off ahead. She's not really waiting for an answer, but you could stop her if you wanted. She shuttles off ahead of you. Uh, sort no, of. We can hang back, right? Okay. She goes over to the tent and uh, she hits this little metal rod on the top. I don't, it's really hadn't noticed it, but you see they all have it. It's like a knocker almost, uh, but she just <laughs> strikes it. Uh, their version of knocking on the, the door, I guess. And uh, pokes her head in. I, I think, how far away would you like to get her? Uh, it would be just out of earshot unless you creep up closer to hear if uh, an exchange between whoever might be in there. Did you want to get closer? I'll, I'll get closer. Okay. Okay, make a perception check. Uh, rolled a 14, but my passive is 22. Okay. So just based on your passive, um, you hear, uh, you hear her say, supper is ready and served out there. If you, if you want to go, if you want to get it. And then the tent flap opens up. You can see someone's face a little bit. And then you hear, uh, say, I, we'd like to. I brought some guests along that, that wanted to investigate the last residence here. Uh, I promise to be with them. I won't let them uh, take anything, if you don't mind, if we can have them look. Uh, you hear it all pretty clearly, and they go, yeah, sure, I've got nothing anyways. And this person sort of stands up, walks out, just nods at you both, walks past, and heads for the... Um, it's for the stew, basically. It's over by the benches. As he walks past, I, I want to ask, um, excuse me, sir, when you moved into the tent, was there anything in there that you found from the last occupants? Uh, yeah, there was something. It was uh, just uh, I, I, a cloth. Not big enough to be a blanket, and unless you're a baby, maybe. Uh, but uh, it's in the chest in there. You're free to go through. I got nothing. Oh. Thank you. We're not interested in your belongings. Um, I will take a look at the piece of cloth, but but uh, no, we don't we don't want to interfere with your your possessions ah yeah sure i'm not interested in my belongings either so uh, no worries <laughs> wow fair enough <laughs> just sort of walks on over to the to get some food and uh that allows you to come to the tent and margaret waves you in um uh, let's see Uh, I think, yeah, we'll go with that a little bit. So you're still, you're, you would, we'll, we'll put you in here. Margaret kind of pulls back the flap. As you get in, it's probably, it, it's pretty big overall. It's 20 feet by 10 feet. Um, you can see two cots in it. Uh, maybe it's not 20, it's like 15 feet by 10 feet. Uh, somewhere around those dimensions. There's two cots in it. There's a chest. There's a little, like a tiny little table. You might be able to play a game of cards uh, and two like stumps. Um, one of them, it's just got stuff stacked on it. Like there's not another person there. So they're using it as a little table. There's, there's, uh, it looks like some sort of weaving project basket, maybe. Uh, you're not entirely sure because it, Definitely not a good job uh, on top of the table. It's half put together, trying to figure out weaving of some sort. And a bed that is not made. The, the covers, though, are... They're not just scattered. They're picked up, um, sort of hung over on the side under on this rope. It's kind of messy, but in, clearly the intent is that... Uh, they don't want any bugs or insects 
reptiles, anything like sneaking into some made bed to just have it stuck up off the ground. But the lower mattress is on the ground. Not much else in here. Um, however, you can... It's yours now to search around. Margaret says, uh, I'll just stand here by the front. Whatever you need, just ask. I'm guessing that cloth is a towel since Margaret mentioned that they were kind of mean freaks. Um, but we need to examine it to make sure. Could be. Okay. Uh -oh. So, yeah, that was over in the chest, which is not open, but you can go over there. Uh, it's not locked. Yeah. No. Just in case Margaret didn't hear the conversation I had with the, the person staying in this tent, I'm going to let her know that the, the, the last residents left behind a piece of cloth and the guy said that it was in this chest and we could take a look at it if we wanted. Oh, oh okay. I'll, I'll just observe. It's fine. Okay. And go. You open the chest. The chest has... Mm. When you open it, you do see the, the cloth. It is it is a it is the size of um, hmm, a beach towel, I guess. What we would consider that. So it's about the length of I don't know. I guess it's about four feet by two and a half feet, something like that. And is it just plain cloth? There's no markings or. No, it definitely has a pattern. It has a, um, make an investigation roll. Twenty, not natural. Okay. Uh, so there is as an absolute. There's absolutely a pattern on it. In fact, you you're noticing this. So this, uh, it looks like a lotus type pattern. Um, really, it, it's sort of background in woven into it. That's not necessarily the interesting part though. Uh, you, you might glance over it uh, in the, if you weren't paying close attention, but it looks like uh, after the fact, Every that three of the um, petals, lotus, yeah, uh, are dyed, but definitely not originally. Afterwards, and it is in a some sort of pattern on the the. Uh, material or fabric is it possible it could be a pattern that's like referencing letters or some other kind of code or it's just the decorative pattern uh you're unsure at the moment you might need to take it back and study it like really get into it to figure that one out i think i am going to take it back but um i don't know i feel bad for the guy so i'm going to leave him 10 silver pieces Okay. In the, in the chest. I'm going to put it in the chest. All right. A nice towel. Uh -huh. Yeah. You could buy this old camp for 10 gold pieces. <laughs> oh. With silver, some, silver pieces. Um, some minion of darkness you are. <laughs> She's a good uh, tipper. You know, know, you know what money is the root of? She's just <laughs> spreading the joy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, Pugil, you wrapped up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut there. Pugil, you wrapped up your, your, your primary song. You get some clapping. You get uh, one really curious, probably five or six year old come up like they want. They're they just sort of edge up like, like looking at your harp. You get a little closer, and they're looking at your harp, and they're looking at you. And they got stew they left way back <clears throat> behind them. 
and people are are just you know they seem to be accepting that you are you were a bard amongst them. All right. Well, I look up at the children and smile, and um, uh, I'll I will uh, turn my attention to them and play the children songs I know. Okay. I am not a minion of darkness. <laughs> All right. Is that the name of one of your songs? Which is exactly what a minion <laughs> I'm trying to imagine Rafi singing, I'm not a minion of darkness. That is, that is exactly what a minion of darkness would say. <laughs> I don't say that to the children. What rhymes with darkness? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like how you're so small, you're looking like to children. You don't even think you can go eye to eye with children. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You, you are looking up to some of them, certainly. Uh, this one, for example, is definitely taller than you. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, they're, they're, I mean, all the adults seem relaxed, fairly pleased. Somebody comes over and goes, hey, do, do you know that one about the, 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 the wash, the bathhouse, the bat, the one with the bathhouse, and the. That's the if one. If I know, if I know it, I'll play it. If I don't know it, I'll improvise. Okay. I'm a few bars and I'll fake. <laughs> oh, no one, no one, beat go, don't stop till the break and don't one. So you are, <laughs> you are happily playing them a tune, children's songs, requests. You have uh, you have sort of garnered. I'm guessing that you're just holding everyone's attention mostly, so that everyone's yes. free to do. So that everybody. Needs to. That's my plan: is okay. to be the center of attention, and um, let my companions run rampant. Okay. I did not remove Ray <laughs> and Fathom off over at the other location, <laughs> which I will do. Um, Okay, two snack and corn cobs sitting down at the table, having some wine, looking at these two people. Well, what brought you to this island? Us. Well, well. No, you go ahead. So yeah, there's there's um. I don't know a general sort of they look at each other for a moment. They look at you. They try to get a... It looks like they're trying to get a read on, I don't know, something about you. Um, and then... They go, well... We were... Uh, I guess originally we were just on a ship as hired hands, and we came here looking for a better opportunity. We found uh, we could work with, uh, uh, occasionally we'll get on a ship and, and be porters of a sort. Well, this, this seems like a, kind of a unique community in my experience. Uh, who runs this place? Well, uh, no, no one really runs this place. Uh, uh, and so sort of looks at, at uh, her friend. Ah, well, yeah, no one really runs this place. But uh, certainly we nod our heads and give a little respect to some of the others here who have been here a while. We come back often. We've been off the out of the port a few times. And every time we've come back and have been welcomed back. And uh, we just contribute as we can. Sometimes we bring in some goods, uh, cloth to repair some of the tents. Uh, yeah, a few coin, perhaps, if we need to. But no, I, I can't say it's not like a government or a god. We don't hold anybody in higher esteem perhaps than another huh. that's, that's <clears throat> unique 
if you if you don't mind my asking, uh, we we're looking for some of our friends who who recently served on uh, uh, on the ship that we're currently serving on, um, and I'll describe the the, the slot crewmen and, and ask them if they've seen them or oh uh, yes. yes met the... them in here in the. No, we met the brothers here. Yes, they they were here for uh, quite a while. Uh, well, eh, maybe not quite a while. Some, for some, perhaps, uh, almost uh, a month, as I recall. Oh, did, yes, it was about a month. Were they, they occasional visitors as well? Oh, sorry. Sorry, Goosenick. Did, no. did they have any dealings with them? Well, as much as we've been here, yes, we, we, we interfaced with them multiple times. We uh, asked them if they needed things, uh, acquired a pair of uh, clothing for one who wanted uh, a little bit something else. Um, they uh, hunted with the rest of us and brought in some fresh fruits from time to time from gathering things about maybe some from the city. I don't know. Not a lot of money. Nothing. Nothing that struck you odd about them? Uh, well. Anything that uh, might have uh, might have alarmed you or uh, put you at guard, put you on guard with them? Oh, no, alarmed. No, no, not alarmed. But uh, uh, it's curious. They did disappear at the same time roughly every day. Uh, they went, um, you know, they, uh, the bathing, they said, um, at the uh, river, but um, that very consistent, though I would not say they always came back as though they had had a good bath. <laughs> I mean, it's it is a jungle, and I suppose uh, from the from the, the the stream to here, you could get dirty once more, and they were just uh, washing the stink of the day, as they would say, off them. But occasionally they would come back, still a bit um, well, uh, soiled, but not uh, as clean as you would expect. Well, not not, not uh, pink and scrubbed. Well, uh, whatever it might be for a, a lizard folk. Right. Okay. Were, were they occasional hired hands as well on other ships? No, they were looking for their jobs here. Uh, they found uh, a few, um, turned down some, found one they finally wanted on the Silver Swan. Uh, of, of course, uh, many people here are looking for jobs. Uh, Batman, who just came out of the tent, so it's, can see quite a few tents around. Uh, most are looking for jobs. We uh, even are looking for jobs, just not, not as hired crew so much as uh, uh, porters of goods. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. What? Yeah, what's, unfortunately, uh, we we're not really on a trade mission. Uh. <clears throat> but you do say you do say there. Uh, let me ask you this: what, just a little meta here. What was the name of the the guy at the bar again? Bentor. Bentor. Sorry, Bentor. Uh, I'm going to ask him. Um, are are the people here? Do they when the people that are looking for work? Do they go through Bentor or do they uh, uh, find ways around him? Now you bring up a, an abrasive point uh well uh, some people here they um uh they have uh, mixed feelings i guess you would say so uh we please understand we we are not uh <laughs> we don't um uh <laughs> we don't report to bentor no do we want to take any jobs that he would offer us but uh, so we have an outside perspective from the inside, if you will. And he uh, he is uh, both villain and hero to people here. So mm. he has some believe him, which may or may not be true, that uh, he, he wants to ensure 
everyone gets a fair uh, pay, a fair chance at jobs. Um, and then some feel they would do better on their own without someone uh, interceding in their negotiations, as it were. So, let, so let some of them this. are paying something to Bentor. Some of the people here are paying to Bentor. Well, uh, uh, no, none of the people pay. Um, the captains that hire pay Bentor a finder's, a finder's fee. fee. Yes, yes. And uh, some are just not uh, happy with that uh, arrangement, and some are quite happy to to go by it. So, so let me ask you this: uh, Do you know of any um, uh, hands that would like to uh, sign uh, without Bentar's help? Yes, we know several. Not that we would report. You know, we know we don't obviously don't report to Bentar either. We're just. Well, are you um, are you looking? They, they lower their voice, sort of lean across the table a little bit, conspiratorially. Uh, do we know? Uh, I'm going to get meta for a minute. Do we okay. know what positions, what we would call the positions that need filling, uh, job titles? Yeah, I mean, most of them are just pretty basic deckhands. Um, okay. There is a need for someone who. Uh, not a navigator, but someone who does understand how to keep um, on course, like someone who's good with a sextant, uh, so uh, some rudimentary skills, but it's one person. You really only need to fill in that role. Okay, thanks. Like a helmsman. Yeah, yeah, like a helmsman. You need at least one of those, but the rest is just, they need to be able to, to tie a knot. So deckhands. Yeah. And and while we're still meta, uh, is the plan to subvert Ventor? Are are we are we planning to sub, subvert Ventor? Are we? I mean, I know our captain. The captain said she didn't want to deal with them. Well, it's a captain um, who's who's going to ultimately have the say so. So right, right. I would suggest so we could we, find somebody here as well as. Go through okay. Bentor. All right. So, oh yes. Okay. So, uh, so going back to the the smugglers, we're gonna. I want to explain. Yes, we're looking for you know mostly deckhands and uh, somebody that's of a helmsman quality. Somebody just a step higher than that. And uh, we're looking for a captain, Silver Swan. Huh. Oh. Uh. Understandable. So the Silver Swan, yeah, it's uh, the, the name I'm familiar with. Uh, so I, I think uh, depending on your age requirements, there are a few who would make uh, wonderful deckhands that don't like Bender. One fiery, fiery young lass uh, just, uh, will, <laughs> uh, wants no part of that man. Um, she would do well on a ship, uh, young though. And then... Uh, the, uh, probably who wouldn't understand the stars, though. I don't know. Uh, and well, we then, don't really have a position on Bentor. We're just looking for good hands. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, well, but uh, some of the hands you find who are willing to talk to you and not talk to Bentor have a position on Bentor, if you right. understand. Well, sure. Yeah. Um, so, and then uh, there is... I don't know of one that could navigate well or, or be a, a helmsman other than uh, to lock in a point on the horizon and go as best they can. But yes, her, a, uh, I, I think there is a, um, a gnome who would be interested. And uh, yeah, we got enough gnomes already. <laughs> <laughs> He says to himself, uh, "Yeah, <laughs> I, I give him a quick elbow." Shut up, Corkov. This thing is enough gnomes. <laughs> and then... I'm not on the crew. You're not on the crew. Uh, and then, uh, uh, yeah, there is a good iron muscle around. Um, 
I think there could you make enough. an introduction uh, to this this uh, fiery lass you were speaking about? And just to clarify, you are more of the stevedore porter type person, not the deckhand person. Is oh correct? no, I'm not interested at all in, in that sort of okay. work. Um, the silver swan. It's just I. Uh, I, my understanding is they go out, they wander about, and they come in. That's rather aimless for me. I, I, it's not my cup of tea. Yeah, we're finding it to be that to be an accurate statement. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But there's lots of adventure if you're up for that. Uh, I'm up for lots of coin, perhaps. Uh, uh, Fair enough. Fair enough. The easier, the better. One, Maybe we one can... last thing. Uh, oh, maybe not a last thing, but one one thing I'd like to do is is pull out the little drawing I made of that guy's tattoos. Oh, okay. And uh, mention that I that we've met people with these tattoos. Didn't it, do they mean anything to you? Hmm. Uh, uh not really. They, well, perhaps I've seen it before. Uh, is this, uh, uh, we are on the topic of the, the brothers, was this uh, a tattoo on one of them? Something like this, I think, yes? I, you know, I don't remember where we saw it. Uh, I just I made a sketch it, of it. I think I've seen it It was before. a different person we saw. Yeah, I don't think it was on the brothers. Oh, interesting. Hmm, oh, I think I've seen it before. Maybe not on them. Maybe it's because it's fr fresh in my mind after you bring it up to me. So, would it have been here in this camp? Do you think, or someone you served with, or oh, I would have had to uh, someone you saw maybe bathing. It was bathing. Yes, I feel like it would have been here. I got to recall the uh, the 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 stream by the falls. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The slad spawning pool. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't say that out loud. Corn cob's got some feelings. So, okay, so sh can we set up a meeting with this, um, the fiery gnome? It, it is a gnome lass, right? Oh, no, no, no. It's, uh, no, no, it's no. a human it's girl. Separate. Uh, yes, you, um. Okay. Uh, uh. We could we could meet with the gnome too, I suppose. I mean, the captain obviously trusts the navigator, so. You must yeah. think gnomes are all right. Well, certainly. Uh, I could uh, 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 make sure both talk to you if you're going to be okay. here overnight, for sure. Yes, but we'd yes. appreciate if you kind of kept it on the down low. We don't want to really interview everybody in the camp. Ah, uh, I see. Um, yeah, we could do that for you. Um, and maybe, just uh, sort of pours you some more wine, pours themselves some more wine. Maybe, maybe they need a small finder's fee, corn cob. Yeah, I think I think we could arrange something. Ah, well, that would be wonderful. We'd appreciate anything. Uh, um, well, I'd say after our meeting, for sure. Good. It's, we'll if it's it. successful, absolutely. Excellent. And a, like um, a little more meta, I would like to have uh, usual there when the gnome, uh, when we interview the gnome, for sure. I mean, the rest yeah. of the party can. You know, we can have everybody there. It doesn't matter. But I just want to make sure Fusual's there with the, for the gnome so we can okay. get a good eye on them. Uh, well, sure. Uh, the gnome uh, is probably in the tent at the moment. I I assume that uh, uh, I, I assume the girl is probably bathing. It's uh, evening. It's been a bit of teasing today. For her so uh a bit of teasing oh well oh uh, that she went bathing well as they went into a uh they we have fun competitions during the day and uh uh she uh, she may or may not have lost and um but she lost and then uh, <laughs> uh the uh the the ritual hazing of course is 
whatever the nearest uh, uh, bovine feces are, are around, oh, I think we're tossed. We got to get out of this place. I'm kind of what is it? Well, I'm just curious. What is the, what's the competition? What's what is the competition? Uh, it's a, a, a wrestling, and she's she uh, she always finds. Um, well, this is this is why I say fiery uh, when I speak of her. She. She will not give up, uh, though she fights uh, uh, with people twice her size, and uh, often she win? loses. Well, look, on occasion, often she, loses. She has won on occasion. Um, she doesn't take it well when she loses, though. Sounds like she just needs a trainer, perhaps, or <laughs> to learn perhaps some humility as well uh, uh, within her bounds. But um, yeah, well, anyway. She would be cleaning off the uh, the remnants of her losing. Uh, uh, so I'm sure she'll be around. Uh, she's not missed a supper Great. that I know of. Great. So interesting. Mm. Don't lose Maybe a we'll wrestling match or they give you competitions. <laughs> oh, they're good natured fun during the day. If you stick around for a day, you'll see it. Sometimes people get bored. Eh, no, thank you. <laughs> it's very hospitable. This sounds right, up, this sounds right up my alley. <laughs> Gooseneck's like, yeah, we're going to wrestle. Wrestle. WrestleMania. El Lagarto will wrestle again. All right. All right. <laughs> so um, they're like, I'll, I'll bring her around. Uh, no tents available. So I assume you will just be uh, camping around the, the uh, town here. Yeah. Yeah, we'll if you can call it a town, sure. Well, some of us might. Um, we'll make okay. We'll make camp here. Well, then enjoy your evening here. Uh, your what? friends are already making wonderful. Uh... Did we? Did we get their names? I don't know if we introduced ourselves. I imagine you would have introduced yourself. I'm sorry. Yeah. We we must have skipped over that part. Um, and we actually have a wrestler of some renown with us whose name is Abrin. Oh. I've not heard of this Abran. Um, I never, ever <laughs> have they ever been covered in cow dung, ever. Yeah, <laughs> ever. But he's willing to try. <laughs> Spores, maybe, but not dung. Well, well um, I don't know if he won that match or not. So when they introduced himself, one introduced themselves. I'm sorry, we skipped over it, so I'll just skip over it. As Kriana and one is Sorella. Were they both Kriana? females or one male and one female? Yes, both. Well, uh, both oh, females, no. most likely. One looks Kriana very and elvish, Sorella. and probably uh, Sorella is very um, androgynous looking in general. Okay. Um, Okay, so they are going to be looking out for you and to uh, send those to your way when available. All right, fantastic. Uh, let's see. You're singing a song, so I think that's a wrap-up for you, and we'll just figure out what Kay and Fathom, if they've found anything, if they want to finish up anything here. The blanket. Um, I... I want to ask Margaret um, if the furnishings, like the beds and whatnot, stay in the tent between occupants? Oh, yes. Uh, these these were for sure, yes. Most okay. of the time they do. Um, if you get a job on a ship, you don't usually take your bed with you. For sure. Why would you need to? Um, so then I just want to give the interior of the tent to one over and see if there's anything that looks like um, uh, hiding places, you know, hmm. hollows in the dirt, um, uh, anything in like the stumps that would be little cubbies or, or anything like that where, where stuff could be tucked okay. away. Uh, make an investigation check. And this time you're very specifically looking. 18. 
so you actually, as you're kind of once overing the bed, um, you realize it's kind of nice. It's kind of a nice bed frame. The bed itself is not. So it's it's a cot. It's cot sized. It's got basically uh, a, a straw strapped mattress on it, but um, it's got a little makeshift headboard on it on on the cot. And at the as you're kind of going over the back of the headboard, it's not very big. Um, it does have two poles on either side that support a centerpiece. And at the top of one of the poles, you notice there is a seam around. It looks like there is a plug or something in the top of the pole. Mm -hmm. um, so the entire pole is probably about a two and a half inch diameter. And uh, the seam itself is means that the plug is probably two inches in diameter or so. I will pull it out. Take a look. Okay. Um, it's actually, uh, as you begin to kind of pull it out, you just, you're pretty good feeling mechanically around different things. It, it threads out. So very rough, carved in wood, um, rough sized, but carved pretty well in wood threading. And this sort of turns out of it. Um, you pull it out and you see a, um, a, a pretty uh, mold, mildewy, kind of moldy papered parchment rolled up in there like a scroll that's been stuffed down into the top. But the mm -hmm. jungle atmosphere has been, I don't know, unkind to it. I will carefully pull that out. Okay. Yeah, so you pull it out and then you just see the scroll. It's it's a rolled up scroll. Clearly. It's not sealed or wrapped or it just begins to actually unroll a little bit as you get it out. Just it expands a bit and then stops. It's sort of now the the moisture in the air and some of the mildew that's grown on it and stuff is just it's got a good shape form in this curl, so it barely expands a little bit as you pull it out. Okay. Um, I don't think I want to mess with it here. I think I want to take a look at it under maybe better conditions. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to tuck that away for now. Okay. Anything else while you're here? Uh, no, I'll close the, the top of the pole back up, but then uh, make a note to uh, go find the guy that lives here and tell him that he's got a, quietly, that he's got a hiding cubby in his in his bed and how to access it in case he wants it for anything. Okay. Make sure that... the parchment isn't his before I carry it off. All right, gotcha. Uh, Fathom, uh, so it sounds like Kay is done. Are you uh, done with what's in here for now? Yep, I think we've found more than I expected to find, honestly. Okay. So when you go off and find the guy, he's just eating his soup over by the fire, listening to Pugil. He seems to be pretty content listening to Pugil. And he, uh, you know, when he asks, he goes, oh, no, no, no scroll of mine. Thank you, though. I, if I forget anything, maybe I'll keep it there. And he goes back. Some soup. Well, he is just a bitter guy. <laughs> <laughs> like ever get well, anything? Maybe I'll right. keep he's it the there. Perfect, he's the perfect what a deckhand. Sad sack. What a sad Clearly sack. he's had a bad rough run. life. I don't know. I, whatever I mean, terms, does he look like he'd make a decent deckhand? Probably. Uh, I mean, he doesn't, you know, he, he looks fairly fairly strong of back. Uh, he's not 
Uh, he seems like he could follow orders. He's listened and talked distinctly. He just doesn't seem like a uh, like a go getter. Uh, but yeah, so he's not sickly. Or anything. No, he doesn't seem sickly or anything. Um, uh, his outlook, <laughs> unless you think that his particular outlook of life is not conducive to a good deckhand, then he'd make a good deckhand. <laughs> <laughs> well, we Mitch better run it. that by. Uh, Go ahead, mention it. Other people. <laughs> okay. Mention it. Mention it. I'll mention it. Dude seems like he could use a lucky break. Although I'm honestly not sure that taking work on this ship is lucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, it might end his sorrows forever one way or another. Fair point. I'm, I'm not sure looking for the most down in the dumps guy is for a deckhand is the best strategy, but that's all right. I mean, I ever so get anything. we need be, plenty of decades. To be fair, he doesn't—he doesn't talk like Eeyore. Uh, he just talks very matter-of-factly, but on the negative side. Yeah, he's just going to be really? a blast to be locked up on a ship with. <laughs> hey, look, I'm just bringing you options, and no, I think maybe it's great. We could do this maybe guy he knows how to navigate. Maybe he can be a helmsman. We're gonna have and to he's get got skills to... we don't know about. He just does, can't off, convert them into money, apparently. Yeah, the captain's going to get their final say anyways, right? We're just looking for bodies. Yeah, we're just doing preliminary interviews. That's yeah. right. Except they're bodies that, have to, that we have to rely on. Well, I mean, they have to rely on you. Keep them safe. That's right. So these toadstones, would would they even fit in a gnome's head? Just out of curiosity. No, probably not. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> and I say let's go for the gnome. All right. Um, so uh, let's see. Uh, Hugh Joel, you get done with your song. I mean, you know, you know, you know an audience well enough to know you can't play forever. Um, but everybody's everybody's happy, and besides, your 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 musician's uh, belly is grumbling as well. Time to have some yeah, you know, you yourself. you got to leave them wanting more, right? That's right. So you um you can uh, wave the chickens off the table. They're starting to gather. <laughs> Hey, hey, be gentle with those chickens. <laughs> yeah, it'd be a shame if something happened to one of them and you'd have to put it out. Of Don't misery. bruise them. <laughs> Tenderize them. I, uh, I keep these chickens around forever now with Gooseneck in the party. The temptation at every, at every port is a chicken. There's a chicken in every port. Chicken in every port. <laughs> Ah, it's good enough. Okay. You guys, um, I think uh, you have a pretty good sense after the, just the time you spent here of the camp. And they go about their own business and start working. You do see uh, Margaret, you know, move over and talk to some people once you're sure it was uh, about, you know, how the gentleman felt about you in his tent. Um he didn't really seem to care. And then these two, um, uh, Kriana and Sorella, they go off different ways and talk to somebody. And uh, so you see uh, Sorella inter intercept this young girl as she's coming back, kind of point over to you all. Have you all shared the information you each found, by the way, your various... Have we points? gathered back? I'll be happy to. Yeah, yeah, you've gathered back. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We exchanged our, you know, here's what we found with the with Sorella and Kriana. Who is it? Kriana? Uh, Kriana, yeah. Kriana. Sorella and Kriana. 
All right. Then, um, all right, so you guys know that. This girl comes up to you at the, to the table, this young girl. And uh, she just says, she looks, she looks sort of fresh scrubbed. Uh, obviously just trekked right back in the stream. Sorella says you Does she look like someone. a wrestler? Uh, <laughs> she's very wiry and lanky. So I guess that's yes. Answer to that is yes. Hmm. You needed a hand. Well, our, our captain is looking for deck hands. What's your? Have you ever had an experience aboard a ship? Or well, I've been on a ship before. I can scrub. What did I you know do? What a tar bucket is made some. Uh, you tie knots. You specifically mentioned tying knots. I can tie knots. Any knot you want. Any knot wow. that's useful on what's, a ship. What, what's her name? Uh, she's, my name is Mint. What's your name? Mint. Ric Flair. <laughs> I feel like okay, the gnome wants boy. to get in a wrestling match. The nature boy. Yeah. Yep. Okay, nature boy. Well, we're getting all yeah, kinds of deep callbacks. Deep cut today. there. Deep cut. Yeah, that's right, baby. I, I don't mind wrestling teenage girls. Wow. No. Wait a minute. No. Wait, wait a minute. Yeah, no. Wait a minute. No. What? What? What I say? Well, I'll describe I'll describe as best we know what the captain's looking for and what our mission is and uh suggest that if she'd like to come along with us when we make our way back to town, we'd be happy to introduce her to the captain. Well, what are you offering? I mean, I don't want anything to do with that bastard down there at the Jagged Blade, but if you if well, We you don't like... have anything to do with the bastard down at the Jagged Blade. Good. Good. Then, we assume uh, you're talking about uh, Bentor. Yes, and of I'll course. say it low. We all we okay. all know. Uh, a copper a day, then, and all my accommodations and food, right? Uh, uh, did the captain give us any guidelines about that? I don't think we have a salary guideline. We just have a recruitment guideline, or recruitment amount. Uh, well, so I got to talk to the captain. Sure, I'll do that. Yeah, you'd have to discuss it with the captain. We're we're empowered, uh, perhaps, to provide a sign-on bonus if the captain thinks you're worthy. Oh well, what sign-on bonus would you give if the captain thinks I'm worthy? Well, it depends on how worthy the captain thinks you are. <laughs> oh, then give me a scale of the sign-on bonus. Well, let's see. You're you're looking for at least a copper a day, you said. So maybe a silver? Doesn't maybe sound... two silvers? A silver or two? Maybe more? How much money okay. did the captain give us? 100 gold. Like bag. 100 gold pieces? 100 gold pieces, yeah. yeah. We are pretty sure that, that the silver swan pays a good like a decent yeah, rate. Yeah. At least going for yes, we are. We we to... we're not trying to rip her off. Ronda I just, just don't Ronda want just to. just gave a guy ten gold pieces for a for a right. towel. Right. So I don't want to disrupt I... this. <laughs> <laughs> we already talked about how this is a neo syndicalist commune. We don't want to disrupt their fragile economy. Yeah, uh, you know that. You know, that... I mean, we can tell her that we don't know the the exact amounts, but we know that it's a fair wage and. Oh, a fair wage. Yeah, well, it's competitive. To, to, she pays competitive <laughs> rates for sure, and the sign-in sign-on bonus is well worth your time. I will talk to her then, and I'll make sure that you uh, you uh, if you suggest a time, I'll meet her. Silver Swan on the ship, I assume. Well, what what I would suggest is that you come back with us when we head back to town because it, things may unfold rather rapidly after that in terms of us being ready to go. Done. That green tent is mine. Come and get me when you leave. We'll do. Very good. We're going to we are going to set up camp here, right, for the night. Yes. Yes. We're not going back. Yeah, okay. Just want to double check. Well, we still have to meet the gnome. Yeah, before you're and even we have to 
done with that conversation. Besides, if we're hiring the sad sack guy. <laughs> Where did the gnome go? I've got him hanging around here somewhere. There he is. Before you're even done with her, uh, this gnome sort of pulls up over here. He's uh, he's smaller than Pugil. Wow, that's small. He sort of heaves he's himself. Get washed off the deck. Wow, it's a micro gnome. <laughs> I haven't seen one of those in ages. Well, I mean, maybe he's about the same size as Pugil, but he's a gnomelet. He's a, he's he's he he might be a, a half inch to an inch small shorter than you. He's a kinder. So that's a lot of distance. Is, <laughs> is that the Dickerous Dark Sword miniature? I think probably it is. might be. Here, let me turn them so you can see. Yep. Yeah. Oh, it is. That's funny. He goes, "Hey, yeah, yeah, you were looking for someone." Oh, I don't know if I can handle that voice for. <laughs> yeah, we were we're looking for uh we're looking for somebody that uh has some experience uh with some minor navigation. We're looking for a hand that has some navigational experience. Yeah, Maybe a yeah. homesman. I, I can do that. I I I can hold a wheel steady and I can point towards stock. Can, can handle can you the use wheel. a sextant? Yeah, I can use a sextant. It'd How about an astrolab? Oh, yeah, with little instruction, yeah, I'm sure I could. Just a mechanical device. It's easy enough. So you've navigated by the stars before? Not with an astrolab, but yes, I have. Huh. How many times? How many ships have you been on? Yeah, I've been on two or three. What's your it's normal rate? Like he's our man. What's hey, your rate per day? My rates, uh, yeah, last time I was on a ship, it was, uh, it was uh, two and a half copper a day. Uh, I should be getting more than that now, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers. I've been here a while. Uh, I'd settle for the same. Well, you're kind of an executive level dude. I would think you, you're worth more than two and a half coppers a day. Well, look around. I, I, I mean... Maybe it's time for a little change. Sometimes a little adventure is worth two and a half copper a day. And what's what's the gnome's name? What's his name? What's your name? Uh, uh, I'm Gooseneck. This is Corn Cob. Which where do we go? Yeah, I'm looking through my notes. I'm sorry. Uh, oh. Is is Pugil around anywhere? Uh, yeah, around. you wanted you wanted Pugil oh, to be there. Okay, okay, right? okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just yeah. You, no, I didn't want to. I Behind didn't... the lady in the green skirt. Uh, I just wanted to make yeah. I just wanted to make sure she he... couldn't oh, see him standing yeah. there. Engaged. I'm sorry. Someone's blocking the view. That's all um, right. Oh, okay. Oh, there he is. <laughs> it's 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 hard. He was behind when... the little kid. Okay. <laughs> Well, kid was blocking our view. Yeah. Uh, uh, obscured by a chicken. Hold your harp up <laughs> so we can see you. Uh, um, That's why I have to make plenty of noise. At least this guy's smaller than I am. Yeah. Yeah, what's your name, short stuff? <laughs> yeah, my name's Trent. Abrid's going to be thrilled. Trenton, really, but uh, <laughs> no one wants to have two vowels. Yeah, Trent. But we do Trent. want to have two gnomes. What's what's the problem with having two vowels? Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's more than a mouthful to some people. They like to snap out words real quick, like. Wow, that's mm. an interesting perspective. I guess mm. mint is a good way to go too. Then we have mint and Trent, Trent. and mint. Oh, Mint. Mint. You're looking at Mint? Is that why she's... Uh, well, yeah. No, we met Mint the other... Uh, just a little while ago. Yeah, that, I, yeah I'm, not, I'm not... That was just met me being... Yeah, she me thinking. She can't navigate, but I, I... You know, uh, she she wouldn't give up on something. I think she'd be a good hand, too. Uh, no good with a sextant, though. I bet she'd break it. Probably. Has he been here long enough? Does, and then you'd both be covered so in cow dung. 
I've been here two weeks now. Oh, so he would not have known the Slod brothers. No, doesn't seem like it. He's okay, well, let's got a explain. Smaller head, so I'm not worried about the stone in his head. So we're okay on that. I'll I'll explain to Trent. You know, we're our captain's looking for a couple deck hands. We need somebody with experience for a you know that's some sort of helmsman. And when we head back to town, if you would like to head back, uh, the captain would speak with you and see if you're interested. You know, see if you meet her standards, and if so, we'll uh, we'll bring you on board. Fair enough. We'd like you to keep it on the down low, though. We don't want to wind up with a whole passel of people heading no, downtown. No, no. I, I, we, I... we will be joined by Mint, however. We did we did want her to meet the captain. Yeah, fine. It's a good choice. Uh, are there any other uh, maybe people that you know who are looking? I don't uh, know how many deckhands we're supposed to bring back, you to know, be honest. Most of the people worth your time here, they're gonna, they're gonna. I think they've sided up to Bentor a little bit, to be okay. honest. Okay. So um, yeah, maybe. So there's very off few. All right. Fair enough. And you're not a Bentor um, partisan, you... I take it. What was that, Fathom? Um, I was just gonna ask him what he thought of uh, Mr. Sunshine. <laughs> oh. Capability of doing Towel a guy. Yeah, yeah, one foot in the grave over there. <laughs> oh, great! Yeah, this get better all the time. <laughs> no, I'm definitely lobbying for him now. Yeah, Uncle Meat Shield, we call him. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a red shirt? <laughs> if he doesn't, we'll buy okay, him a red shirt. Battery died or something. Yep, Frank's battery died. Oh. Sing us a song, no. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Uh, sing I us a sing song. Sing us a song while we're waiting. Uh, yeah, my battery died. I'm sorry. I'm not the servant of darkness or whatever. Whatever. Uh, your yeah, song is I be. mean, he, he could push a mop. Uh, he's fine. Uh, you know, he'll do what you ask him to do. He's not hes not that bad. He does, he's not really a downer, but he's just uh, he's unrelatable. I mean, how, how, can you, how can you have a good conversation with a guy who doesn't want nothing? Nah, yeah, whatever. No, I've got a pretty good perception. Can I tell if he's being evasive at all or, or hiding anything? The gnome? Uh, yeah. Make an insight check. I mean, I'm just I'm just, gonna, just part of my process here. That guy over there isn't one of Bentor's people. Then eighteen. Uh, no, not one of Bentor's. Uh, you so corn cob. You don't feel like he's being evasive. You feel like he's. Um, you actually eighteen uh, is good. You feel like he's a little relieved to be talking to someone who's not been bullied into going through Bentor. Okay. Uh, what was your answer as to how how many people we need, we were looking to recruit? Uh, it was it so it was uh, three to four. You could do. Five, and was the but, captain looking at the same time, or no, was it totally he, she, on our? She shoulders? gave you the bag and said, "You find them. I'll veto or yeah. not. I'll do the final stamp." All right. So we've got there these. Going to take sunshine, Ray. <clears throat> we've got these three. We we might need. Let's just call know, him Ray. We should sunshine. Raise Ray. his name now. Yeah. <laughs> if, we, if we can find those women from the bar when we get back to town, I think they would be good candidates too. They didn't want to put up with Denver nonsense. Um, were they looking the bar? I thought they were. I thought that's yeah. why they were frustrated. Yeah, they were. They were. They were looking. Uh, that would be five. That would be your maximum. If you were looking at okay. those three plus them. So, do you know if Ray is uh, a Bentor partisan or? Nah, nah, he, he's not. You know, the good thing about someone who doesn't care. Has he about had much... experience on board a ship? Do you know? Oh, yeah, plenty. Sure. He can tie a knot. He can do a mop. He's got a strong back, too. Yeah, I'm sure he'd be good. He knows his stuff. You don't have to huh. pay him. 
Well, he's got no advocate for himself, and that ain't going to be me. I'm not signing up for no one for free. Well, uh, Captain pays a good wage. What do you... Well, you could be his advocate. Would you consider then. going and uh, talking to Ray and having him coming over and talk to us? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll go get him. Yeah, hang out. I'll, I'll check him out for a moment. I'll be right back. And he hops off. And this is middle of the game, so this is the part where we need to take a break before Ray gets back. Uh, so so uh, we can all get up, stretch our legs, refill our glasses, go to the restroom, and everybody out there, um, we will catch you. Uh, stick around. We'll find out what happens after the intermission.
Hello, welcome back after our break. Um, uh, when we left off, um, Trent was out to get Ray, and I I was trying to find a miniature that would accurately portray this Ray the way that I wanted to portray Ray. And I can we call him Ray J? Ray yeah, J? You Maybe. can call me Ray. <laughs> you can call me. Uh, I Another just, deep cut. <laughs> I feel like I want to go one of two ways. I, I, one of them is kind of being, being trolly, though, so I'll, I'll go the other way. Hold on. Let me grab this mini. <sighs> this is going to be all right. Then you're going to beg the question, then we're all going to want to see the trolly one. Oh, okay. No problem. Yeah. Here, I'll show you the trolly one. He just walks by for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, instead, it's dub, isn't it? Isn't that's that dub, dub, yeah. Instead, of Ray yeah. comes in. Oh, that's that's a good yeah, Ray right there. Yeah, that looks like what you've described. That looks like yes. exactly the personality. That's much more dour. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Pass a turn. Exactly. Life <laughs> so. sucks, and then you die. Yeah, but we all just work through it anyway. Yeah. Can we have your liver then? So, um, <laughs> Ray comes back and he sits down. Trent told me you were, uh, you were hiring. I'm interested. I've been here long enough. <clears throat> well, what, what are your requirements? You'll feed me. And um, you just tell me what to clean or mend or uh, scrape up. I'm sure I'll be fine at it. I've done it before. <laughs> you, you worked on ships What before? do you use to kid? for a salary? Uh, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I'm getting food and a place to stay, matter. right? I thought you were the one that wanted stuff again. Oh, well. I'm getting food and a place to stay and adventure, ah. I guess. I'm seeing the world. Oh, we can guarantee Ray, adventure. Have you have you worked on a ship before? Yeah, that's how I got here. Uh, what was the, what was the last uh, crew you served on? Oh, uh, yeah, the Baroness. It's a, it's a fun ship from the uh, southern seas. Came up this far, and I thought I'd take the opportunity to see more of the world. Took a step off of it. Where are you from originally, Ray? Oh, well. South end of this continent would be it. Must be huh, uh, 2,000 leagues from here. That's a long way to go. <clears throat> yeah, most of the ocean looks the same, but the shoreline sure was a nice uh, change. Went from grasslands to this... This lush stuff here, though I don't like the bugs and the the way the moisture chafes my my body, but <laughs> wow, uh, chafing would explain no. a lot about it. <laughs> so maybe he just <laughs> needs some talcum powder. He's not gonna be working for me. <laughs> maybe he just needs a little talcum powder. <laughs> All right, Ray. Well, um, so we've got some candidates. That. That we've got some candidates that were question, lined up. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to know what part of the ocean didn't look the same. You said most of the ocean looks the same. Oh. Good question. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if you've been that far south, but um, back where I'm from, it's quite, what would we call it, teal. Lovely in many ways. And then it gets dark, <laughs> ominous, stays that way most of the time. Huh. Abrin's going to kill this guy. <laughs> <laughs> should, we, should we start a pool to see which one he goes after first? <laughs> oh, it's got to be the no. Okay, Ray. So uh, we've got some candidates lined up for the uh, for some deckhand jobs. If uh, when we head back to town, 
we'd like you to come with us and you can talk to the captain and see if uh see if you guys are a good fit for each other how does that sound sounds good by me when you lead him back to town uh probably tomorrow tomorrow in the morning morning we'll come we'll, we'll get you we know where your tent is yeah, i mean yeah you do uh and he looks over he looks at at, at fathom and and uh okay thank you again so uh I'll, yeah i'll see you in the morning just let me know when you leave. i'll be ready i'm usually up when it comes to all right all right well we'll see you tomorrow ray yeah have a good evening uh and he just turns around and walks back he uh doesn't stop by the fire uh lots of other people are stopping chatting uh you know trent is over there talking to people like yeah it's about time i found somebody it looks like things are looking up for me Mm, Which, damn it, I specifically asked him not yeah, to go. Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, but he did, <laughs> he did not specifically say he's going anywhere, but he did say, it's about time things are looking up for me. Okay. Hmm. I have to keep an eye on that one. <laughs> so, obviously, we need to investigate this towel, figure this out. And we also, I'm thinking maybe we should look into the, uh, who was it? The uh, Trent, was it? No. The smugglers were saying that uh, the Slod brothers didn't come back clean all the time. So maybe we need to <sighs> poke around they were obviously in the slotting in the something. You're well, slotting. that's what I'm saying. Maybe we watching. should poke around and see if we well, can we find that scroll too. And the scroll. Oh, that's oh, right. we have a scroll. scroll. Forgot about that. Because I'm not sure if I'd the, like to know if we've towel seen towel that towel lotus towel design towel. anywhere before. Hmm. That's a good. Question. So, because I know we've seen various flower designs on things. It's it's getting on to be night, right? It's yeah, it's getting later and later as you go. So we should we set up camp and um yep. maybe examine this towel thing and I don't know if I don't know if uh uh Kay wants to mess with the scroll or if she wants to wait or I'd like to take uh it's okay with you guys, I'd like to take six silver pieces out of our our uh captain's fund and find the two smuggler people and give them each three of it since we're going to head out early in the morning if, if that seems like a fair amount sure yeah. sure enough. and i'd yeah. like to do before we leave i'd like to do the same thing for the rest of the people once we're on the road just to convince them we're for real okay but we don't have to do that right now but i will go Try to find those people and give them their finder's fee. Okay. Say, so, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, it's going to, uh, you, um, well, uh, to make sense, to you, you, you said you're not, uh, you may not be coming back. So, um, thank you in advance. And my apologies if none of them are acceptable. Uh, I, I assume I will be keeping this anyways. Uh, I appreciate Yeah, we won't I... be looking for it back. Well, no, it's not our money. <laughs> the best money to spend is uh, the not. No one else's. Kind. That's right. Yeah. That's the smuggler's code right there. Yes. Uh, Actually, so. can you uh, ask them what is Bentor going to do if he finds out that we're out here independently hiring? That's that's the other reason we pay pay the people we're taking in to keep them quiet. But I'll ask if Bentor exacts any revenge, I suppose. Prepare. He, he has like a gang or something. Yeah. yeah if if Bentor gets word of this, which uh, I'm, I'm not sure he will, uh, you've done a good, a good job uh, 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 keeping it discreet, if you will. Um, 
Uh, he hangs out around the most obvious places for people to pick up. So the, the, the jagged blade would be the most obvious. Yeah, if, I don't think we're going to take him to the jagged blade. I'd rather find the captain and bring her to wherever we have. Right. Well, you, you probably won't have any problems. But uh, if, if you do run into Dentor, I assure you he won't take it out on you. You'll make the rest of our lives more difficult, uh, perhaps. Well, how would he trace it back to you? We're not going to tell him. Well, uh, I don't know that he will. Except uh, occasionally a couple of his uh, uh, lackeys come around here and try to, um, uh, you know, uh, strong hand some people into uh, agreeing to work through him. So, uh, well, I think mom's a word for us all then. Well, mom is a good word, but uh, they're not entirely stupid. Sometimes they are. Admittedly, Doesn't sometimes. He have but they, they <coughs> would it? note the uh, sudden absence of uh, mint, ray, and French, perhaps. And so if, if all of them are gone, and they don't know where they went, Something's uh, rubbing on something. Yeah, I hear a mic. There's a ship in town. Um, well, you know, then perhaps uh, uh, he could put two and two together. Justin? I am checking out to see if that's Justin. It's Mike. It is. I'm just it is guessing because <laughs> it, it is not me. It is not My mic is muted. There is a mic that sounds like it's being rubbed on. And I don't know where it's coming from because I'm watching all of you and I'm not like, what's that coming from? Anyway, sorry to mention that. Um, okay. So, yeah, he says, well, they're not stupid. And, uh, or she says, and they would notice perhaps. Uh, three people gone and that they did not get a cut of it that's all i'm saying mm. i don't know what kind of revenge that might be though not on well we'll be I ready think. for it good be ready for what you can and i don't might have think... a sudden outbreak of hedgehogs yeah. <laughs> hedgehogs you say <laughs> Not sure I understand, but it's, just, uh, it's inside joke, inside uh, humor. Well, thank you. I appreciate the pay in advance, and uh, I wish you luck. I hope you found the right people for you. Well, thank you very much. Pleasure doing business with you. We'll look you up next time we're in town. Good. Well, in town or. Uberville or whatever this is. <laughs> well, uh, so uh, Ayureo is the port. Um, we we uh, perhaps jovially call this uh, the tent city of Ayureo. Uh, Ayureo. It depends on where you. Wow, from. that's quite a quite a lot to say about a group of tents in a wilderness but that's i guess you got to have that going for you well some people have sought us out believe it or not uh, you have margaret oh i believe it i believe uh, it margaret is just here the biggest tent is hers and um uh, it doesn't she's no interest in hiring on a ship she helps us eat uh, what she gets out of it is her own uh so uh it's almost, uh, uh, how would you say, uh, 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 a wonder uh, of the world, if you will. That some people come to just live. <laughs> not us. Anyway. Yeah, not us either, really. Well, we each have our own reasons. So, uh, thank you. And they just sort of go back to, they don't dismiss you, but, you know, they wait politely for conversation. They talk amongst no, themselves. No, that's fine. I was done talking to them anyway. Yeah. I think maybe before we bed down for the night, um, we should check with Margaret about the no bathing, bathing situation of the brothers. 
okay. if you had any insights on that. Um, because they because they would come back dirty, you mean? Yeah. Okay. If she had any idea of anything else they might have been pursuing. So, uh, if you, um, yeah, when you approach Margaret, she just says, I, uh, I, I only know that they went to bathe. Um, I didn't really note if they, how well they bathed themselves, uh, but they, they went to the river all, as I said before, sometimes twice a day. And twice a day so to bathe. Did they, did, to? did they go? Do you know where they went? Oh, did they well, go to different places on the river? Or did you see them at the, the river? Spot? Most go to the falls. There's a, a pool that, um, as the falls come down, it uh, it can be uh, rather violent, really, under the, the water itself. But it's quite nice. It's carved out a, a, a good bathing area. Most clean themselves there. Is that where they went? I think we. I saw them there specifically once, and most other times, I have no reason to think they went elsewhere. Hmm. What time of the day is it? Would we have time to go to the falls and look around there for slot eggs? Uh, it's totally nighttime. So, it, it, okay. As you've had, you know, you've, you've. You got in late because you had a little uh, uh, T-Rex uh, <laughs> gerbil creature, no, you know, T-Rex um, hedgehog event, and then you got evolution. There. Call it Called an evolution. Yeah, yeah, an evolution. And then you had um, some dinner that was served out, and you've talked to various groups, and you've sang some songs. So we're now pushing on to hitting midnight, right? We're, we're pushing late. Oh, uh, it's, it's sack time. So do we want to head back to town tomorrow morning or do we want to spend any more time chasing leads about the slod or do we want to? <laughs> well, if it's safe to look at the scroll here, maybe that would give us some intel. That's a good oh, idea. Yeah, like, I, I agree with that. I keep forgetting I we have a scroll. I, yeah. If we find, if we, I'm, I'm wondering if maybe there's like a, a hidden chamber behind the falls or something. Mm-hmm. Could be. If they did a lot of bathing a and the they were dirty, they something there's. Well, we better get up early and yeah, go look then weird. before we are you supposed know. to meet everybody else. Okay, so you want to get in like four yeah, or five hours sleep, maybe, and and get in. Well, let's look at the scroll first, and then go to bed. Well, is Kay comfortable doing that? Yeah, that's fine. I just didn't want to do it, you know, in the tent while Margaret was watching. Yeah. Well, okay. I assume we're we're camped off by ourselves. So you you pull out the scroll, you kind of unwind it. Uh, you'll need some light, but amongst you, I know you're all capable of some kind of light. My only question is, do you use magical light, like the light spell, or do you use a torch, or do you use some other means of lighting this up? Was the scroll should we have, magic? Uh, <clears throat> should we? Yeah. Should we have um, Adam detect magic on it? Hmm. Yeah. No um, one's just in case. The magic detector now. I no can one's. identify it. No one's. Oh, checked okay. If it was magical yet. All right. Well, I'll take a look at it with the goggles. Hmm. Uh, I would so say we try both natural and unnatural light. When you look with the goggles and light. Uh, assuming both happens at the same time, you find an interesting correlation. There are uh, some magical... There's a magical... There is a series, maybe... Maybe five distinct areas where there's a couple runes that are magic. They're clearly inscribed with magic. But they're just runes. They don't do anything per se that you can detect with the, the magical goggles. And uh, overlaid, when you see it with real light, what you, what you see is this, it's a, this scroll has clearly a, like a, some sort of labyrinth detailed out in it 
And it's been detailed out in, uh, you see that it was uh, charcoal, and then you see some sort of other pigment or inks drawn in, and you see another sort. So it appears as though um, it's been done not all at one time, that it was added on to over time. And in each of those different mediums that they use to create the, the drawing of this labyrinth, there is at least one magical rune. Hmm. If we can care of the runes to the pattern on the towel, is there any correlation? Oh, interesting. Uh, make a investigation check. And it, does the labyrinth appear to be a decorative pattern, or are the map, or a map to a maze? I will answer that in just a moment, Pugil. Fathom, what was your role? Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Okay, you are. You hold up the. You hold up the. Uh, the cloth, and you look at that, and almost identically to where the runes are, there is those colored in petals or those colored colored in pieces of the lotus flower that have been colored in. Uh, interestingly enough, when you look at that, there is a part of the the labyrinth that it just sort of fades out like they never finished it. But uh, there is one extra lotus flower colored in. You don't know in what pattern the labyrinth would have gotten there, but you see at least Four more lotus flowers underneath that that have no coloration. And there's nothing on the scroll to show that anything was going there. So it seems uh, not mapped at all, per se. Then I'll get up to Pugil. Pugil, what was your question again? I want to make sure I get it right. Does the, does the labyrinth appear to be a different pattern, or is it a, does it look like, more like a map? So your time with Morgoth has shown you that this seems to me like amateur cartography. Someone has been mapping out something. You see some areas even, uh, because you've all, I don't know if you're, I, I don't know that you're, the right word is chummy with Morgoth, but, but you're, you've certainly taken Morgoth on a lot of adventures with you. Um, you know what it looks like when someone starts to kind of like, oh, no, no, I drew this wrong. And they, they read back and they kind of scroll. And it looks clearly like someone was going, okay, right here it turns left, right here it turns right. There's a whole pattern. I have a question. How far away is the, is the ship? How long will it take to get there? You're about 30. So if you go, uh, you believe, okay, there's two answers. One, if you believe you want to go directly through the jungle, you're, you're no more than about 20 minutes away from this, the port town. Uh, if you follow the, the paths that you know are patrolled, you're probably 30 minutes. So you could cut off two minutes if you went directly, 30 minutes if you follow the path. So, do you all? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to suggest to the party, since we're going to go check this out, this, if we go back to the falls tomorrow to check it out, I'm wondering if they were there, if the slot were there to map something out. If so, maybe going back to get Morgot and bring him back to help us uh, decipher what's going on might help if we can find whatever this is. Obviously, the slot were looking for something or the brothers were looking for something. I don't know. They got turned into slod. I'm not sure. That's but, what I'm um, wondering. Maybe, maybe it would behoove us to grab the navigator or no. Um, I, I think that's good. Idea. I think that's fine. Of, Is there of the various on materials the that are... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Is there anything on the map that 
obviously correlates to land features that we are aware of in the area. Like we know about the hot springs. We know there's a waterfall around here somewhere. Yes. So the what you assume is the entrance uh, to this uh, labyrinth, the way it was drawn clearly shows a waterfall near it, part of it. Uh, you're not sure, but, but it indicates that the entrance of this is near, around, or in about the falls. Are all the different okay. layers on the map, are all the different markings in the same hand? Yeah, uh, yeah I, think, I think you could tell. Yes, they're in the same hand. Um, it, there's a very hesitant, well, not maybe not hesitant, but um, repetitive pattern that they're using to sketch out. Like when you see a straight line from the top to the bottom, you see that it's not one clear cut, you know, drafter's line. It is chicken scrawl. Even if it's, even if it's, if it was done with charcoal or quill or no matter the medium, all the way down, the line is done. With the same so I think it's way. a product of one individual is what I'm getting yeah. at. Yep. Okay. What if we took the people into town, set up a meeting with the captain, grabbed Morgoth, and then we come back and leave our three recruits with enough money that they can survive for a few hours in town or a day in town with the captain, and then we come or back and look just... at the... Board, Labyrinth. Yeah. I'm not sure we want to have, yeah, maybe they need a, a orientation or whatever, but I'm not sure we want to have them going through the dungeon with us. Agreed. Yeah. I, I was going to, I was going to suggest to even save a little time, we should do that exact thing, but maybe corn cob, you and I can take the recruits and we send the other three back to the falls to start searching while we take the recruits back, grab more got, and then we can get back. Are we not going to send Abrin with the, with the recruits? Just send Abrin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are, we, are we not going to recruit the two tavern girls? Well, uh, see, that's we what I'm thinking is later. Yeah, I, I say well, let's get these dinner. three back. It's only 20 minutes. I don't think we need, there's no rush to get behind the waterfall, as near as I can tell. Well, didn't the captain want yeah, to leave? We... I don't know. Yeah, but you're only talking about 20 minutes each way, so. Yeah, I thought we were going to be in town for like a week or two. The, yeah. Exactly. The captain did oh, prepare okay. to buy the, the ship berth for uh, a week. Okay. Uh, to, for some reason, I thought also, there was a time frame. But, okay. I think we get these case... people secured with the captain, paid, paid their bonus, get them on board, and then we we can wash our hands of it for a little while while we go investigate. Yep. And we can show this to Mar Morgoth too. Yes, exactly. He can come we'll back with him. us. Yeah, we'll bring him back. I Maybe don't think we should split up in about case about of Benchmore, though. I, I'm that's a fine. little worried about splitting up, yeah, yeah. in case something yeah. Yeah. That's surprises fine. us at the falls or Bentor cold coxes along the trail or something. <laughs> I don't know. Good call. Good call. Yeah. All right. Okay. So would, we could, we could send Abran off by himself. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Just send Abran. Yeah. Let him roll for initiative and charge into the labyrinth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make him take okay. all his good stuff off first. Yeah. Get somewhere safe. <laughs> Leave, leave all your magic stuff. <laughs> we'll watch it for you. He just Abra. goes in with just just oiled up abs. Yeah. Hey, we found he another one of those abs. Elvis challenges. <laughs> all Abran needs is oiled up. Leave abs. all your magic by the yeah. corner here. <laughs> yeah, you got to do it naked Abra. though. Yep, yep, that's it. Just you and your loincloth, pal. <laughs> so you're gonna you're gonna sleep here. And then, so in the morning, did you want to escort these three back to town? Yes. Okay. Yes. And once yeah. we get once we get a few paces away from the 
town I'd or the the tent town I'd like to give them each three silver pieces as the initial part of their sign on bonus and also say that once you meet the captain we'd like you guys to get on board the ship or do whatever she wants you to do as quickly as possible because we don't want to get in uh, we don't want to get uh, Ventor apprised of our plan. Okay. Okay. So if so if this we're is in a sense about, buying your silence and, and discretion as well. If we're concerned about Ventor figuring out what we're doing, would it be worth uh, cutting through the jungle to get back to the ship instead of going through town? Because uh, I'm picturing a conversation that goes something like, Hey, where are you going with Trolls. those three people up to your ship? Uh, nowhere. We're doing nothing. Yeah, I, I would say that would be fine if we can circumvent circumvent the jagged edge or the jagged blade. And if there's any more T Rexes, we'll just. You know, or just maybe we just yeah. lure Bentor yeah. out and kill him. He's been a pain in our ass already. <laughs> well, if, if he. Uh goes and uh, causes problems at the tent city um, when he feels like he's being crossed, hopefully we'll be in that area when he decides to do right. that. Yeah, it's not like it's that far. Okay. You're heading back to the ship then uh, in the morning? Uh, you get yes. There. Okay. And let me, is this the, that's the... So we're trying to stay off the beaten path, is that correct? Yeah, we took the yeah, jungle route. The T-Rex the... is the best way. Oh, okay, yes. yeah. We went yeah. the jungle route. The T-Rex is the... in the giant jungle hogs. That way. <laughs> the T-Rex route, okay. That's fair. So let me, uh, let me get you... Running Roll for initiative. Back to the ship. Because you oh, we made it. don't really have a problem making it back. Uh, I don't see why you would have a problem making it back to the ship. Like I said, 20 minutes quick. It's morning. You took care of the T-Rex last time. And so now you just need to sort of uh, introduce the captain to the proposed crew members. Let me um, let me put you up there on the deck. Are we gonna go try to find those other two girls? Say after we. Sure we should do that. Sure. It one way or the other. I, I'm not sure it matters a whole lot. You want to do it now? Well, shouldn't we wait I, I just for? Think that brand to explore. I'm gonna put Ray, Brent. Not necessarily. He could be. I mean, we, well, whatever. Doesn't matter. He can catch up. Either way. Uh. So did you? So you just send. Uh. You can. You can certainly send word to the. Um. To them. The that, two girls? Yeah. Or, you know, go to the tavern, stop by. I mean, it's in town. Although that tavern. They're at the jagged edge, though, aren't they? I was going to say the that jagged... tavern in particular is exactly where uh, Bentor sort of hangs we should, out. We should, if we're going to, if we're going to try to recruit them, we should probably save them for later. I think so. Ready yeah. Because we're that's... getting close to disembark. So if we have to yeah. fight Bentor and things turn. Whatever. Yeah. Well, we have we know. have two deckhands oh, and the and the uh, the gnome. Good. Grief. So all we need then is a <laughs> couple more deckhands. When when we talk to Proctor, those two, Proctor's we... Proctor's scolding you right now, Bobby. He's scolding you right now. Every time. Every time. <laughs> oh my God. Sorry. Sorry, but Jim. When we talked to those two, did we find out where they were staying? If they were in the tent city or, or in the town somewhere? Because if they're staying in the tent city, we might be able to find them there. I looked for them while we were there. 
And Frank said I didn't see him. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and I don't, I, I think. We did say we were going to stop back by and talk to Venter at some point, right? Yes. You actually, I mean, the discussion you had with Ventor, he's out finding people for you. Oh, is he? I guess. It, yeah. It That's would awesome. be the captain's choice if she wants to interview those people as well. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Okay. So we've put forth our panel of candidates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right. Uh, are you just going to... So you introduce them, and they're, they're fine. The captain says, thank you. I'll talk to them all. Uh, but are you guys going to stay and, around? Um, so my question to you is, will you stay around during their captain's interview? Or are you going to take off during this? Or Only if she wants us to. Should, well, we should we appraise the captain that Venter is looking for more people, too. Uh, okay. Uh, she says but, that's good to know, but um, that obviously just she to cover doesn't our, hire him if she doesn't want That was just to cover all our bases. So Bentor may well come up with some candidates. Yeah. That we might uh, have to quote unquote interview. And that's fine, but she she was not necessarily keen on going through Bentor or letting right. you guys know. No, we it. know that. Yeah. These yeah. are the real yeah. candidates. We're, Bentor right. will present fake candidates. <laughs> We're just, yeah. Understood. Don't okay. make everybody happy. We didn't want to get in Dutch with Bentor. So you, uh, uh, you, but she doesn't seem to need you during this interview process unless you wanted to stick around. She doesn't mind that you're around or you can head back to uh, where you wanted to go. I'm I'm fine either way. I mean, the captain is the one that makes is, the decision in this. Is Morgat is Morgat available? Oh yeah, of course. Around? Yeah, you wanna? You uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go <laughs> oh, with you. I'm I can't happy imagine the two of always them available. keep them far apart. <laughs> <laughs> There's two of them now. They're, they're yeah, going to be yeah. great at the officers' mess. We wiggle our little Billy Barty fingers at CornCon. <laughs> Hedgehog. If they all get on this ship, CornCon, you're going to have three three gnomes. Uh, he says, "Yeah, oh, look at that." I don't, I don't mind gnomes. It's but... uh, this, this is. Uh, I mean, this is this work is not very good, but but this is exciting. Oh. Oh, I can see how they've... Oh, look at this. Very interesting. You know, this denotes a secret door, on, I believe, on what they're saying. This is very interesting. Where, where did you Do find Do we tell them about the door. towel? Too? Towel? <sighs> Show well, them the towel. Now we did. <laughs> all right, yes, all right. I just told him about the oh, towel. There. He might know coding things or something. Uh, he looks at it and says, I, uh, the... Uh, did you, did you do you point out the correlation yeah. between? The, yeah, point yeah. Out the it obviously the... means something. Okay. Oh, I, I, um, I, I, my, uh, honestly, I, I don't practice writing code with my maps. This is, uh, I don't understand the point. Uh, it's not a secret. I mean, th this is mapped out clearly. I'm not sure why you do this. Uh, a notch in the bedpost? I'm, I don't know. Huh. But uh, uh, this I understand, and he points back to the scroll. Uh, I don't, I don't know the meaning of the towel. It's yeah, just our belief is it's that likely each a spot puzzle. where it correlates, it, there's something there in the in the area that's being mapped. Oh, a, uh, clearly. I mean, I see the rune on the map. Significant landmark. Uh, oh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, but there's a significant rune on the map. Why, why would it be on the towel? <laughs> that's uh, uh, mm. <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't know what they were thinking. Maybe there were two people mapping. One like so, to use the towel. I feel like we should point out at this point that uh, uh, we found this stuff in the uh, tent where the two guys on the ship who turned into toad demons were living while they were here. 
Um, so it's possible that that whole toad demon replication thing happened uh, is, or was in some way related to this exploration that they were doing. Oh, my. So he turns almost white. He did not enjoy that toad demon experience. The slod was very dis was very stressful. Uh oh, um, we just lost him. <laughs> I, are you? You think they got uh, uh, possessed? Radicalized? Yeah. Yes, we thought we they got radicalized. We don't, we don't know. We don't know what they were looking for. Something before or after they were turned into slod. We don't know. Oh, uh, well. Uh, uh, we could use your help with the map. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's quite a mystery. It's a mapping mystery. You can see it's not finished, right? It is not finished. That's correct. I can see that. And and, honestly, and this is a very inferior version. An, I mean, it's it needs amateur. A nice clean... I, I could make yeah. a much better version. Yeah. I... What? Who should we talk to about this lotus iconography? It's it's a pattern. It's um, it's uh, I I don't know who you talk to. Um, uh, Are these runes must... standard symbols for maps? No, not at all. I, I they're arcane symbols. I've seen them a, a few times, a few places, but but not with relevance. Uh, just on uh, the magical items here and there. And, and uh, mm. but I don't know what they mean, and I don't. They're not standard for any real map maker. But these were. Uh, I mean, if they were the the brothers, then they were not real map makers. They were just deckhands. <clears throat> quick, okay. Another quick thought. What if we? What if we have uh, Morgot transcribe these these arcane symbols, and we take it to the bouncy castle guy? Since they deal a lot in magic yep. items, oh, maybe brush. they've seen some of these symbols. Yeah, I think it's worth it. I think it's worth the side trip. For yeah, them. I agree. I just and and I, I think it's a good idea. And the and the the lotus symbology that that has some, that's that's got to have some significance. So Morgot, can you can you do that? Can you transcribe these symbols for us? Of course, it would only take uh, just a few moments. This would won't be a problem at all. Uh, uh, of, of course, uh, just just give me a moment. And he gathers up some stuff. Um, Can I just... actually take a close look at the runes as the magic-y sort of? Yeah, make a, make an arcana check and look at the runes. Okay. Um, fifteen. Fifteen. Um. Yes. So you are. And you do speak infernal too, right? That's one of your languages. Oh yeah. Okay. Yep. Oh good. Um. <laughs> So I'm open for that. Uh, each one of these runes um, seems to so they're not written in infernal, but as you read them or understand them magically, they absolutely refer to a layer of hell. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Um, a particular layer or um well, and when I say hell, I don't really mean hell. I mean a layer of the abyss. Let me change that. Oh, that's even better. Sorry. Yeah. Um, is that house. where the gizmo that Brooke was selling goes? I don't think, no. No, Brooke was selling. It no. went to three different places. The Fey, the uh, uh, plane of water, elemental water, and there was another plane it went to. The astral plane. I don't think was it was the abyss. The astral plane, yeah. But the abyss was not part of it. Does um, the abyss have anything to do with the fall? Not that you know of. No. Not that, and not in any of the things you've learned or known of so far. Okay. Maybe the fall has to do with the waterfall. 
Maybe the whole thing. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. The whole thing is a waterfall. Um, so yeah, when you when you look at it like that, you realize, with especially with your dual bits of knowledge, uh, both knowing Infernal and knowing uh, Arcana, you look at it and realize that whether or not it actually physically, literally represents a plane of hell or a creature from, or a plane of the abyss or a creature from a, a level of hell or the abyss. It's, it's a little unclear, but, but as a point of reference from whoever was making the map, they thought of it as layers of, like the layers you're familiar with of hell. Almost a, um, a, uh, uh, symbolic uh, analogy between them. You'd see so clearly one of them they're like, oh, this is Malbaj for sure. And, oh, well this is, you know, they just kind of went down this list. Uh, there's only five. Well, if there's only five. They didn't finish, they didn't well, finish though. That's true, they didn't finish. <laughs> I'm going to message this to my party members so Morgat does not know about it. Okay. That seems like information he does not need. Hmm. Wonderful. Okay, so are, should we go to this other guy and have him check, or do we know, do we have everything we need from the arcane symbols? Yeah, is Brooke likely to know anything different? About I, yeah, I'm not. I think maybe we should pass it by him and just see. So still, so think? so go to Brooke and see if he if he can. Well, I feel like any, any insight is any insight would be good as long as we don't tip our hat somehow. How much do we trust Brooke, <clears throat> who has a relationship well, with got, another wizard? He's got he's got a bunch of big fancy um rifles from you guys now so no we didn't no, get we them. Haven't made that trade oh you didn't get them yet okay mm -mm. no he wants and we some. also know so, that we also know that brooke deals with the other with mages Vent in town Venter. so true the mages yeah. in his so, town the mage is quite distant but is bentor's buddy yeah. right mm -hmm. so i'm i that would be my one concern with passing it by bentor or by uh brooke Okay. Yeah, you're. Uh, well, and she doesn't have any particular reason to look more favorably upon us than any other random customer. Exactly. Yep. yep. She was pretty fair you about it. Don't everything. know anything about allegiances. Yep. Or if they're just mercenary. Okay, so you're going to take the lotus blanket to Brooke, is what I'm hearing. We're going to take the. I don't want to take the blanket or the scroll. I want to take the the drawings. copies, the drawings. Person. Right. Okay. Right. The ones that uh, Morgot create. The ones yes. that Morgot. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So Morgot finishes. He's very excited to be on the road with you all. And then you go back to Brooke. Let me bring up Brooke. Maybe if we look real hard, we can find an even smaller gnome. I think it'd be cool to have like three different gnome sizes. <laughs> I don't know. I was thinking if we tied them together, we could have like one normal adventure. <laughs> That's true. I think there's well, a Bobby miniature. Sculpt, even. Bobby sculpted a figure of that, didn't he? Yep. <laughs> three gnomes and a trench coat. Three. Oh, three <laughs> halflings. Three halflings. Okay. That's not okay. I'll put can, a beard on them. Not everybody's going in. Uh, well, everybody's going in, but I'm not putting everybody's mini in. Can you get into Brooke? Oh, uh, yes. How can I help you today? Have you come to finally uh, trade those, uh, what did you call them, rifles? Not yet. We're still in negotiations internally. Ah, of course. How can I help you? The Adam, lizard you man wanna... has a question for you. Well, okay. Uh, we've, we found these symbols, and um, our, our companion Fathom has enlightened us to some of the arcane uh, 
knowledge that they possess, but we were wondering if maybe you could uh, shed a little more light on them. Do you know what these are? Are you familiar with this? Can you show Brooke, what do you show her? The, the, the room? The transcription that Borg got me. Okay, yeah. so the blanket or the, uh, originally you had said something about the lotus, but Morgoth was really copying the map. We oh, just I wanted was... to copy the runes from the map. The runes okay. from the map. Okay, okay. Yes. We're just showing your runes. No map, no lotus. No right? map, no lotus. Okay. She says, well, um, uh, they're magical in nature. Uh, there's uh, quite a few summoning spells that one would use parts of these runes from that associate themselves with, well, dangerous denizens of, of quite evil planes of existence. Uh, mm. Why would you have, uh, well. Uh, uh, well, we, we stumbled across them and we, we were just wondering if they were, you know, what they were, if they were, uh, of import or something we should be steer very, very clear of. Well, depending on the context of your findings, they could be of great import, but it could also just be annotations, the footnote of a document, literary studies into uh, the different planes of existence. These are used for mages and those of studied and learned magic the world around. Okay. I, I will I'll message Gooseneck and and ask him to describe the lotus and if there's find out if Brooke thinks there's any significance to that. I'll describe the lotus. Is there anything of significance with the lotus uh, with this lotus symbol that I've just described uh, that relates to these? I don't know if there's anything that relates to these. I mean, lotus is obviously uh, often symbolic of many things. They, uh, they um, rise with beauty to the surface of often filthy, dirty, muddy environments. So people think them as the cream that rises to the top or as the, the cleanliness on layers of filth. They're, uh, mm. In some circumstances, that's their symbology. Of course, there are many sim symbolic meanings to them. Now, almost hey, always Cobb, you have enlightenment. That tattoo. Some sort. <laughs> yeah, it, I do. What about this? Does this have any relation to these other symbols? While we're on, while we're talking about symbol, well, one of the tattoos did have did have a floral component. It did. It did. You're right. Yeah, and when you but it look was a at rose. it, it was yeah, it was it was not a lotus. It was a rose. Mm. Um. Well, interestingly enough, uh, with all of these. Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, I, I feel it's interesting. She looks at a couple other things. Could you could you tell me more about the? Because you're not showing her any of these. You're just asking. Right. Okay. So I'll turn to the I'll turn to the group. What do you think? I, I go for it. Yeah, I say show what? it to her. But I, I'll mess. It. Okay. I, I will. I say show it to her. That's all the expert we got. Okay. All right, so let's uh, let's show her the show her the scroll and the the blanket. Oh, very interesting. She pulls down some glasses and she kind of looks closer. Interesting. Well, you know, a lotus uh, it uh, often symbolizes uh, new beginnings, resurrections, uh, the phoenix. Perhaps uh, it's just thought of rebirth. It as uh, rebirth, yes, exactly, exactly. Uh, uh, but also, um, 
detachment from that which sullies it and dirties it. It's, it's a very, uh, uh, if you look at both sides of the lotus representation, it's not all uh, flowers and incense. And some of it is quite pointy and dirty. Uh, and that seems to be part of the interesting part of this. Yes, I, I would say that that is the representation in this context. It's rebirth and uh, a separation from the filth of the world. Mm. Much, like, much like the fall. I think to myself. <laughs> okay. Um, is there anything that, that would correspond to the various... Uh, planes that are represented on our little chart that would correspond with a lotus well, in terms of number or location on the flower number well now that's interesting because lotus petals are in a very specific arrangement they are indeed uh uh, you know, um, I think there could be some symbolism if you wished it. She starts re-looking at the blanket. Uh, um, could it could it mean rebirth as a denizen of the abyss? Oh, oh boy. Isn't it more likely to be someone who's touched by the abyss trying to rebirth out of it? Well, didn't you say that the the there were di the petals were dyed different colors, I guess is what I'm focused on. I, but the different after colors they were printed the, on the towel. But the colors represent the locations of the of the arcane markings on the maze. Right. Diagram. Right. They correspond. Right. I just was trying to figure out if there was a correlation other than that, a deeper one. Uh, but you you asked about number, and it's the same petal in every flower that's marked. Yes. Right, isn't it? Uh, no, it's different petals in every one that's marked. Oh, it's different. Uh, but they're different colors, right? They are. Yeah, they are different colors. What are the colors, just out of curiosity? Uh, so they're not all... They're, they are... Mm, maybe different colors is an inappropriate uh, representation. I think more appropriate to say they're different shades of a green color. Oh, okay. Oh. Um, so, Inten uh, purposefully or unintentionally? Um, I mean, are they, is it like, well, they ran out of ink or is it... Is it like, okay, they definitely were trying to make this one darker and this one lighter. Is it noticeable or is it... Some were faded with age? I think it's noticeable. Yeah. I think you would notice so, it. So there was some reason that they made one a different shade than another. Yes. Uh, it could have been that they ran out of something, I guess, but um, yeah, it doesn't seem like that. Okay. Um, the, uh, a lotus, well, I, I don't know if there's a correlation. The, we see these, these are all, and she looks at them all distinctly. These are all 15 petaled in diagrams. It's clearly more than the layers of hell, um, or the abyss. Must be some other symbology I'm missing in this. Well, it was worth a shot. Um, I, I can say that, uh, you know, in reality, of course, Lotus has far more petals than this, but um, they're often portrayed on paper with nine or more, or in drawings, and this has 15. You could have greater numbers than that to properly portray them. So it is perhaps part of the meaning that escapes me. Is there a language with only 15 letters? 
Not that I speak or am aware of. And offhand, not that you speak or are aware of either, Kevin. I only know two languages. Right. <laughs> hmm. All righty. Yeah. Well, now. about uh, half of these are filled in. Um, he looks down and says, you, you, you see you have, well, I guess that's not true. You have eight here. Uh, so you have seven more that are unfilled. That might mean something as well. Right. That's kind of what we were thinking. Okay. Well, um, we appreciate the information. Um, of course. Uh, does anybody else have any other questions for Brooke? Nope. No? Okay. I well, won't take of uh, any until we're already on the road. Yeah, of course. We'll remember what we wanted to ask you. Yeah. Come back with about 20 rifles. minutes. I have these things <laughs> still. Okay, we will. Well, we'll come back. Thank you for the information, and we're, we'll uh, we'll be back. Okay. You're welcome. And uh, out you go. I'm going to pull to just all of us for a moment. Or maybe like this. You, um, you leave Brooks. It is uh, fairly early in the morning still. You have Morgot with you. He's excited. He wants to map something. <laughs> He's ready. He's got, ready to map. He's got his stuff going. Uh, you've left the three people on the ship to be interviewed. What is your next steps? What are you doing next? One of the waterfall, oh. right? Well, is there anyone else we could talk to about the significance of the lotus symbol? That's that 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 seemed. I I, I don't think we've got adequate information. I, I don't either. But figure, uh, well, is there's nobody else we could talk to. Than, this is a small port region? town, right? Pretty small. Yeah, a very very small port town. It seems to be. 45 minutes away from the gates of hell. So I'm a little worried <laughs> about that whole thing. <laughs> well, we could try going and asking like Margaret or someone about if there's any local legends about hidden, buried ruins kind of stuff around here. We or kind of saw flowers. the ruin right before the T-Rex attack. Idea. We did see the ruin right before the T-Rex attack. That we yeah. didn't really get to check out because of all the you know, T-Rexing. Um, and hedgehogging. That's sure. Oh. Well, we can... Yeah, I'm, yeah, we can go back and look at the runes. We can... I'm not sure who we can try to pry any more information out of. Yeah, I can't uh, think of anybody either. Well, Margaret does seem to have a mysterious reason for being there, so... Maybe it's not a bad idea. It couldn't hurt her. I, I, okay, I, I agree. It couldn't hurt to go talk to her about it. And it, and that's in route to the waterfall as well, right? Right. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. No, it definitely okay. is. Yeah, I think. Right. Well, might let's be go. Hidden something or other. We can the talk to Margaret. Doesn't but, correspond to the map place, does it? The uh, say that again. Because you said the, the entrance to the whatever the map is isn't right at the waterfall. It's near the waterfall. Uh, it's unclear. It's just, you know, it's associated with the waterfall. Just because of the drawings around it. it this was not professionally done, right? They were, they were like, ooh, this, let's annotate the beginning of this with near Farmer John's waterfall kind of thing. So you don't know if it was right there at it or if it was just... Go there first. Where but. we ran into the T Rex is not near the water. Oh, oh, where you ran into the T Rex? Um, no, it's the quite a ways away, actually. You, the well, um, we need to... the the hot springs that you shove the hedgehog into, or not hot springs, the volcanic vent you shove the hedgehog into is closer to the the waterfall than the. 
uh, runes. Yeah. I mean, we need to check out. I think we need to check out the runes. We need to check out the waterfall again. We need to um, possibly check out the where we shoved the hedgehog in. Is the, is the lotus and... is the lotus represented from the top view or from the side view? Uh, great question. It is top view. Yes. Oh. Top, top view. Top view and 15 petals. Oh, that's annoying. Corncock, can you scan your religious knowledge to see if that's associated with well, another that, face? Because 15 petals is 360 degrees is 24 hours in a day. You know, it gets really complex. <laughs> I will try to. I, does it correspond with any of my religious knowledge? Uh, make a religion which, check. Oh God, I knew that was coming. <laughs> I am lousy at that. Oh, not terribly lousy. Seventeen. Um. Not this lotus for sure. There, there are some. Not religion. this lotus. So I'm familiar with another lotus. Well, you would not be familiar with any kind of iconography that would would, in your religious experience, picture okay. it as fifteen petals. Uh. From the top, it's just not. You don't. Doesn't correlate. Quite Are the unfilled right. petals in any kind of uh, arrangement or the filled petals in any kind of arrangement that makes sense? Or are yeah, they just so the pattern? The pattern of the lotus is identical um, all the way, all the way down, right? As, it, as right. it does its pattern. Each time there is a petal differently filled, the correlation within the lotuses, you're not... It doesn't jump out or strike you. You've, you've all studied this and it doesn't really show. Really, the correlation that you've seen is when you look at it as the, at the same time as the map that was drawn. Right. A petal was chosen and right on the other, on the other page with the map, a rune was drawn. And they just all happen to be, probably not coincidentally, but maybe coincidentally, they all happen to be a different petal of that lotus at a different location in the blanket. Or towel. Okay. Although. But they don't seem to be circular or follow a clock face or anything like that. No. You mean in the order that they're drawn? No. Yes. No. They okay. jump around. They jump around. Whatever is conveniently overlaid at what would be the right location on the map. Okay. Although, I did say, yeah, although now that Brooke has had her, her way in on it, it does strike you that um, this originally did kind of strike you as a, as a infant or baby blanket. And there was something that Brooke said about rebirth. Uh-oh. Uh, so maybe it is kind of a calendar or a timing Great. mechanism. Or it's a, a baby blanket for Shubnagroth. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, everybody knows that's not the right number for Shubnagroth. <laughs> Is it possible that if those guys were taken over by Slod, that they were still kind of in control, they could be trying to undo it? But that's not how getting taken over by Slod works. Uh, you don't know an, uh, a whole lot, but you don't think so. You think once you're a yeah. Slod, you're a Slod all the way. And we don't know <laughs> if this was before or after, right. or if they See, they were right. If they went they into the if they went into the the labyrinth and then became slawed like we're going to <laughs> well that's what i thought at first but then since the rebirth thing i was wondering if they had some condition they were trying to undo 
That could be. Or complete. Yeah. Bring about the rebirth of their yeah. slot. Maybe there's master. that many. Could there be that many more slot? And the different degrees are how old each slot is as it ripens, if <laughs> slots ripen or whatever. I like the way you think. A ripening slot. That's what this episode can be titled. <laughs> The ripening slot. <laughs> well, like if two are completely dark green, then we know that's what it is, right? The rest are still nascent slods. Um, yeah, you're mm -hmm. you. You do not catch that correlation in any of the Good. work. I didn't really want to, okay. but now you've got me all paranoid. <laughs> Like your You're slot's trying to do right. numerology in We're my just... head, and it's been a long time. Where's the Kabbalah? Can you I can't... You're, you're giving Frank ideas. I I've got, I've, I started with a bunch of ideas already, so, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so are we, are we decided we need to go speak with, uh, what's her name again? Margaret. Margaret. And, um, then start poking around these ruins. I think Margaret might hold them. some clues. She seems to be very uh, in control of things in an odd way to me. Like she has this whole thing going. Could be all a facade or a facelod. Maybe a facelod. she's a slod mother. <laughs> okay. Facelod. It's a facelod. That's what it should be called. Oh, I love it. Okay, so you Slot. you you go back and you talk to to Margaret. She's she's not at the camp, which you would know already, though. So you would have went back to the the hot spring. Yep. Okay, Margaret and her assistant assistant, of course, would be there. Which is kind of weird. They just hang out at the hot springs all day. Yep. Yeah, making stew. And make a stew. Making stew. Well, make something out of to people. eat. It happened to be stew the last time. So you go back and Margaret is there. Do we oh. do we know where the waterfall is in relation to the hot springs? Um, do we already know that? No. Well, yeah, you could have learned that from talking to the people in camp. It's It's closer to the tent camp. It would be not quite equidistant. So uh, triangularly speaking, it's about... 25 minutes from the um, hot springs and only about 15 minutes from the okay. camp. So there's no surface correlation between the two bodies of water, the river, the falls, and the No, not on the, the hot springs. Nope. Okay. Okay. So you get back there, uh, get back to the hot springs, and Margaret says, oh, you've, you've returned uh, uh, a little bathing in the hot springs before you uh, set sail. Well, Possibly. we actually, we've, we've come across a few things that we had some questions that perhaps you could help us with. Okay. Of course. Anything I can do for you. All right. Who wants to lay them out? Because I'm very confused. Lizard man. Well, are we, are we <laughs> telling her things or are we just asking questions? Well, yeah. we were, I'm not sure. Yeah. Who, we're there gonna said, I'm not sure what else we can get out of her. Let's start with the, the drawing. Go ahead, Fathom. Or Kay, whoever it was. Okay. Um, so yesterday when we uh, came across that T-Rex, um, we noticed there were some old ruined... Uh, building structures, pillars around. Are there any local legends um, of interest that have to do with with uh, these old constructs in the area? Yes, there are. Uh, uh, legends of the ancient lizard folk who were about this area and the, those that they worshipped. Uh, of course, all the reptilian gods. It was um, quite interesting. For those who are interested in those sort of things, and the the runes were um, part of a uh, well, there are several different runes, ruins. Uh, those near that 
terrible lizard were, uh, I think they were a temple, maybe an altar, a worshiping area. They're very incomplete. I've j I had, uh, I was told about them several times uh, by those who were staying in the encampment. Went on quite a bit about them. But there are more on in, inland a little bit and in different places. Oh, is there, are there stories about those as well? Yes. There, there, there are. I don't know if they're distinct from the others. Just that there were one was once a great lizard folk tribe here, and they not sure what happened to them. They left, got ran out. Dujo, uh, I need to step away for just one moment. I'll be right back. Okay. And. Uh, abandoned the area. There are homes, uh, some found, uh, carved into the stone. They probably were much greater in their day, but. Ancient, you're talking hundreds or thousands of years? Oh, hundreds. Okay. Is there is there anybody that can lead us to some of these places? Well, uh, yes. I think um, I might be able to help with that, or I could, uh, you know, we we could find somebody who would. Uh, uh, I mean, well, we don't want to keep you from the hot springs if you if sent, you're uh, mint on the ship. She knew quite a bit about the area, but but um, you could probably ask anybody in town, really, uh, in the tent town. I mean. Maybe not anybody, okay. but those who've been around a little while. We've shared the stories over campfires and out of curiosity during the day, gone to see some of them. Um, you can see some that were by the uh, by the the bathing falls uh, that were down there as well. Okay, by the bathing falls. <sighs> I still think there's we need to we need to investigate the falls a little bit closer. I think there's absolutely in there. I, well, tell I us about your lizard god on the way. Me? Yeah, you're you're our lizard man representative. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, do I know anything god about this lizard god? Oh wow! Make a make a history hundreds check. of years ago history or religion check. Hundreds of years ago on a continent that you were not raised have, on, it's going to be tough. Yeah. Well, she made we'll it try, sound like we'll there try. were standard lizard oh, gods. Wow. We did. Go. She was just being solicitous because we had a lizard man with All us. All right. I die rolled out of my cage here. One more time. All right. Ah, seven. Hmm. So, I mean, you, you have. Uh, there were obviously lizard folk gods. Uh, your your tribe talked about them. I don't know your entire backstory. I assume it had a. a I, I I don't know if I should assume you had a normal lizard folk upbringing or. Uh, you know, we lived with went. dwarves. Yeah. Well, I I struck out. Yeah, struck out on my own and hung out with the dwarves. Right. So, but after like young adult, right? You right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. So. Um, yeah, you didn't participate much, but but yeah. there there are definitely a, a whole sub pantheon of gods that you know you don't hear any of the normal on your travels with the dwarf and everything. You don't you don't see them in the human cities, the elven cities. They're almost never mentioned. So right. maybe maybe you would recognize them if you saw them. You haven't seen anything that would represent them at all, though. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, can we go check out this waterfall? We will go chasing waterfalls. You go to the okay. Here we go. Go chasing <laughs> waterfalls. So you you travel up to um, the waterfall. It's not too hard to get there. There's a really well established path from the tent camp to the waterfall. Less established. The people got to watch the poop 
off every day. So. Yeah, they got to. <laughs> well, the wrestling matches don't happen every day, but it was when they get bored. So you 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 do get there, and there is a large waterfall coming down a mountain. It opens up into a pretty big pool, probably thirty feet across, maybe a little more. Uh, call it pool if you want, but it's carved out a bit of the down to the rocky um, bits, and then it bubbles up and then heads on a stream that's not flowing rapidly per se, as it goes down and cuts another swath through the jungle. So out. it's like a plunge pool? Yeah. Base of the waterfall? Yep. So and, looking at the... Oh, go ahead. Oh no. Well, there, there are clearly some areas where people have, you know, set out clothing. Uh, some rocks have been stacked up, actually, to prevent um, uh, debris from coming into what I think is pretty clear is set-aside areas to bathe in the water and stuff. But you can see that people get into the rest of the pool as well. So Anyone else there, there right now? Oh, I'm sorry, Gene. No one there right now. Is there anything that correlates between the map and this layout of this waterfall? Looking at the map, looking at the map, and looking at this area, do we see any sort of correlation with the with the scroll? Are all of you looking at it, like trying to make sense of it right now, or is just one? Sure. Area? Yeah. 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 Okay. Everybody, make a perception check as you're looking at it. Uh, this one, you have to take the role. is a different kind of perception. It's almost really? insight. I'll let you roll 18. a perception or insight, but no passives here. I got a nine. Well, Morgoth is with us, and he's, he, uh, he's a mapping guy, so maybe he would have yeah. additional insight. Um, that's true. I think you guys have a different... Because of Morgoth, we'll give you all advantage on your roll. Okay, I'll try again. I'll take it. I need it. <laughs> no. I, got oh, I bumped me to a 19. Going up, yeah, I, bu I got bumped up to an 11. Let me start on the lower right. Kay, what did you get? 24. 24. Fath fathom. 19. Corn cob. 19. Gooseneck. 11. Fugil. No, 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 19. Okay. Wow. So 15 and above, you think that it has to be very near here. There's something now when you're looking at it, uh, especially when more guys like, oh, look at this here and how this goes. This is very interesting that they would depict it like that. Uh, but, um, hey, you... You, you feel like there is a particular way they drew it as you're looking up the waterfall. You see a little bit of rock that, now that you're specifically looking at, it looks like a pitten was, or some sort of climbing spike was buried into it, and you think you still see it there. And when you correlate that with the map that they drew, it seems like it wasn't away from the waterfall that they drew it that's being not clear. What they were trying to convey is it's halfway up the waterfall. I will point that out to everyone else, you know. Well, see, there's that thing up there in the rock, and it kind of looks like it correlates to this. I, I think they were going up the waterfall. Mm. Poor guy. Cool. Wow. My goodness. You have sharp eyes, Kay. I, I see what you're, exactly what you're saying. I agree. That must be a correlation. Climbing gear. Oh. Oh, this is exciting. Well, I can draw this much better. And he just pulls out his own book and starts sketching <laughs> the waterfall as it is. He sort of plops himself down. He's not interested at all in finding a way to climb up there. He has clearly just put that off on you as he draws what this looks like. So do we think the part of the map is behind this waterfall then? Yeah. Starting After with that ledge where the out, python is? 
you think that the entrance is probably halfway up at least. Huge Let's damn the river. Now, we we haven't heard about these two guys walking around with climbing equipment. No, you haven't. Maybe they maybe they've hidden their climbing equipment near here. Don't we have a bunch of people with fly spells? We have yes. flying and we have rope and we have water walking and we have but is he Fireballs. suggesting this for clues reasons or for climbing reasons, Pujo? Who knows what else they've secure, secreted here? If uh, I mean, mm. we could. How far up is the pipe? Not a bad idea. How far up is the cave or whatever we think is uh, up so there? So the waterfall in general is about sixty feet high, and it's about twenty-five to thirty feet where this you see this spike driven in okay. the stone. So we either go up or we come down from the top. We can just fly our elf up there. And you could look around more. To see yeah, let's let's around. search for their hidden cache of equipment. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. And where would you like to search? Well, obviously around the sides where the, the stones waterfall are where they're... Okay. All right. Make an investigation. I want to search where the stones are stacked up and see if they're hiding okay. uh, depression in the ground or something. Yeah. Make an investigation. Oh, man. Does anything kind of around the waterfall? 17. A bit of a landmark, a weird looking rock, a hole in a tree, anything like that? No, not really. There's there. And, and people come here all the time. Like this is. Yeah, that's what very, I very common. It's a little bit off from the waterfall. Yeah, no, I mean, make it, you can make an investigation, Fathom, as you kind of go farther out. Corn Cobb, you're like pulling up stones, looking for any depressions underneath where they've stacked them. You don't see anything that indicates a secret cache or a hiding place. It's anything like, in the water? Like in the... What do you in mean? the river at the base of the falls? So... Ooh. The base of the falls plunges pretty deep underwater. The pools cut out mm. from the water. You'd have to like go down a good twenty plus feet underwater. I have, have to breathe we have, water. We have rivers. We have a water breathing lizard. You do. Yeah. And a water breathing dwarf. Okay. And a water breathing dwarf. And an elf who's not averse to getting wet. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. <laughs> okay, so does and a, corn and an anchor? He could just be an anchor for now. Corn cob and gooseneck, do you want to go down at the bottom of the pool? Then? <laughs> uh, I yeah, I guess. Okay. I'll go. All right. I'll go. Okay. You get you dive in, head down to the bottom of the pool. Make uh, investigation checks while you're down there. I just rolled. I'm concentrating too much on breathing underwater. 13, yeah. I rolled a 13. I got a 1. <laughs> oh. Yeah, almost I almost forgot how to breathe roll. underwater. <laughs> wow. Well, then, uh, yeah, I think I'm I'm bendering it tonight, man. <laughs> I rolled well, this way up. I, you know, my this, search around the this pool was a, also a 1. So I think I just Exactly fell in calm the pool. situation. Corn cob with this uh, water falling down. However, the you you see um just sort of flapping out a little bit a bit of it looks like rope caught in between two rocks uh, i'll try to grab it without yanking it real hard and see if it's anchored in there or if it's a broken yeah, piece so of rope as you or... follow it you you sort of pull it it pull it blends in very well with the water but not too well it looks like it broke loose over time it's been getting uh uh, and wasn't it would look like maybe it was tucked under some rocks because a lot of it, as you kind of follow, it was coiled under rocks, and you end up pulling a piece that's probably a good eighteen to twenty inches long out, and it's that's off of a rock that's tied around a rock, like uh, the rock is an anchor or. Does it seem something. like it would be d below the the python in the? Uh, no, it doesn't seem to correlate with that necessarily. It just looks like someone has tied this rope around the rock that's made, like you'd carry the rock okay. with it or pick it up or something like that. Uh-oh. I find a dead body. Well, if yeah, the rope's broken, rock. the body's already downriver. Huh. Well, it looks no like... No concern the, of ours. 
shift that rock. Uh, all right. I'll do it. If you, you ready, if you point it out to me. Okay. Well, I, we just should be ready in case we open up one of the gates of hell here. Uh, okay. <laughs> what if it worried. just is a big bathtub plug and we drain all the water? <laughs> well, all right. Me too. All right. You pull the rock. It's not as bad as a bathtub plug. Um, gooseneck or and or corn cop whoever pulls it out. You note a little bit of a little bit of grip on it almost as you pull it out, and then you pull it out, and uh, it was over, and uh, it looks like a hollow in the rock. It almost looks like it was carved out smooth, and in there, you find um, a little, well, not a little, but a small-ish chest, oil-wrapped cloth around it. Uh, let's take it. Nice. Take is that out. all that's in the depression? Yep, that's it. And it doesn't go any farther back. Not no, sucking water into it. It's just a straight it. down depression. It goes down maybe, you know, ten inches, and in it is a little little chest. Okay. So should we head back up to the surface? Sure. Okay. You head up to the surface. Come up. You have a uh, uh, oil cloth which seems to be wrapped around this chest for no particular reason. This chest is heavily oiled itself, and it wasn't protected, but it's part of it for some reason. And then a, a chest that is locked. Well, that's closed, perhaps locked. Well, let's set it down and let our, uh, let so our experts look at the lock. Lock experts? Um, is there uh, is there Let's any markings for magic on the cloth? Oh, what was that, Pujo? Any, any markings on the cloth? No. Who is looking at the lock? Um, well, if Kate could check it for magic, if there's some kind of trap on the lock, I could try to dispel that. I cannot magically unlock. I will uh, take a look at it with the goggles first and look for any signs of magic uh, and then just take a look at the lock. No magic, uh, simple lock, well-sealed chest though. But you don't detect any magic and it's not a very complex lock. Okay. Um, so I will let everyone know and then uh, try to open it. Okay, you open it. No problem to open. Uh, as you as it unlocks, it it kind of there was um, the clasping mechanism held it tight, sort of pops loose a little bit, and you can see inside it's it's very hard wood and uh, dense wood, maybe a a water resistant wood of some sort. If you're guessing, inside it is lined, and there is a what clearly appears to be a key. It is carved out of stone. There is a lot of metal in this stone. Um, irons, you would guess. But... Uh, like an can, ore kind of stone? Like an ore kind of stone. It's an ore containing stone. Hmm. Uh, however... Uh, I'll put it... Next to an iron blade, does it is it magnetic? It is. It, hmm. huh. That's the only thing that it cast. Uh, that went two ways. Fathom, what did you say? Does the carving have a recognizable style? Uh, it looks lizard folk. Well, I happen to specialize in wood carving. Oh, look at that. Is there anything on that on that uh, chest that No. The I chest can see? Is, the chest is rather plain. It doesn't look anything like the plain. design of the key. Nothing. Okay. It just looks like it's made to be very well watertight. 
And this is, there is any... very dry. Okay. Is there anything about the key that being a lizard folk, since since it looks lizardy, is there anything I would um, know about it? Make a history check. Yeah, a... make a history check. This is a disadvantage. This is okay. very disadvantage. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Uh, Eleven. Oh wait, okay. wait, no, fourteen. Fourteen. That's disadvantage. Fourteen. All right. Uh, maybe. There is some a hint of a pattern that looks like scales, and uh, you know that um, often. Uh, so it's not. It's just coming. It's flashing in and out of your memory a little bit, it's like on the tip of your thought process. Uh, but some very tip of my forked tongue. Yeah, the, the, the tips of your tongue. Um, mm -hmm. That some of the greatest. Uh, locksmiths of the lizard folk ever often use uh, different shaped and angled protruding scales in some of their designs as keys, but these would be magnificent keys of old that you've heard about and never seen. Um, okay. But that it strikes you as this is very similar. You, Joel, you had something to say as well. I don't nope. remember. Okay. okay. Oh, oh, I do remember. Is does it look, look like the cat made to accommodate this key? Does it look like what to accommodate? The 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 cat the the chest the little chest is made to accommodate the key. Yes. Well, no. It looks like the chest. It could accommodate anything. It was definitely. It's definitely about the size of the key. It was. It was. Uh, okay. But it, it's not but it's like not a, a it's not custom, custom indented to hold it or anything like that. Just very watertight, about the same size as the key. Okay. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, mm. So, found this key at the bottom. Okay. Um, now, now the rope was tied to the rock. To the rock, as though someone was putting it over the location of this key and then tucking the rope under other things. The end of it was loose and happened to be seen by Corn Cob. But it was frayed? So, the end was frayed? Nope, not okay. as though it had been cut no. or anything. Okay. It was just hanging loose. As though it had wiggled loose from the motion of the water over time. Yes. yes. Okay. Well, I'm I'm thinking we should probably go up, but I'm not sure. I'm um, curious if we tied a piece of twine to that key and used uh, Pujol's mage hand to suspend it in the air. To see if it pointed anywhere. That's a good Since idea. It's magnetic. Like a little compass. Yeah. Let's try. Let's try. I mean, it. just just as a okay. test. I don't yeah, know yeah, yeah. anything else of to course. do. Of course, you tie twine to it uh, to try to suspend in the air. The key does not move one way or the other. It does not point as a compass would. It seems to be hanging okay. as you would expect something of that weight and size to hang off the twine. Okay, so it doesn't give us an indication that it wants to go somewhere or it's pointing a specific all. way. Nope. Okay. Well, that was worth a shot. Maybe we mm -hmm. just aren't at the spot where we'd do that yet. Well, yeah, I'm thinking it probably has something to do with the what's behind the waterfall 30 feet up, I would guess, wouldn't you? Right. So, so the question is, are we kind of meta here for a moment are we going to go up into the waterfall tonight or is that something we want to save for Abran for later i'm just throwing it out there because i don't know i'd like Do to see time? if we can make our way to the top of the waterfall and and just see if that's an option for when Abran's here as well yeah as meta i think you can get to uh a place where you could move forward 
before okay. you know ten minutes or so passes if you wanted to. Okay. All right. Uh so do we wanna do we wanna skirt around and try to go to the top of the fall then or I'm curious if there's to... a path up to the top, yeah. Because it would seem to be easier to get to a, a cavern halfway up if we were coming down. Because not everybody's gonna be able to fly. Yeah. Right? I so mean if you're looking around we just need one person to fly and have a rope, don't we? Right, but if you're going to hide something in a cavern, would you count on everybody being able to fly to get there or crawl down a rope? That That's all I'm thinking. Okay. So if you're looking around... Well, you guys, I couldn't fly up there, but I could climb down from the top. That's all I'm saying. You you see that you could take a very a roundabout path to get to the top. It would take quite a while, but you could uh, to get to the top and then do something to get down. You get the feeling that if you were a good climber, it would just be much faster to climb from here. If you're not okay. a good climber, you could end up in the water or bashing your head on the way down against some rocks. So are we well, climbing we on the outside of the waterfall? Yeah, that, that's, that, that uh, spike that's been driven in the stone is just off to the side of the waterfall. It's not in the water. So there's enough handholds and footholds to climb without climbing in the stream of the waterfall itself. Yes. Though dangerous. Okay. Yeah. Those and I have, probably one at I a have time an, too. Well, we could, I've got a decent athletics. I could climb up there and secure a rope. And yeah, those that need fly. to fly, yeah, we fly. Yeah, we can fly we you up fly and you can secure a rope. Be safer. Okay. The problem well, is going to be getting in behind the waterfall one at a time because that's very Well, I would say once the person that's our up danger there, point. see if they see something. It might not be directly behind the waterfall. Like, I think we need to send someone up there to see what they see. Okay. Who's, yeah, who, I who's agree. the one you're flying up there? Reconnoiter. I have okay. nothing about flying. Gooseneck. All right. So who's who's casting fly on gooseneck? I will cast fly on gooseneck. Okay. So you cast fly gooseneck. You're able to fly up. Are you going to tie the rope off first of this thing? You see, when you get up there, it is uh, it's Might definitely well. made to tie it off to it. If you want, yeah. To. I'll I'll tie I'll tie the rope off. Okay. And uh, make a perception check as you're looking around. Okay. Up there. Uh, 15. That's pretty good. Uh, so you see an area where you could actually, this little bit of rock hangs over a little bit, which would make it very difficult from some angles to see. But now that you're right here at it, flying just at level, you could see where uh, you could, if you were laying down, a body laying down, you could climb in behind it and the waterfall actually comes out a good three feet from touching that. So you could not be in the pressure of the waterfall, go in this little crevice and end up behind the waterfall if you wanted. And more importantly, it looks like people have traversed that because there's debris and, and the amount of um, growth that you see in some of the other areas you don't see as much of here. Hmm. Okay. Um, I will... Can I fly into this area? No. Well, yeah. Once you get here, you really can't fly. You can just kind of crawl through. It's a belly crawl okay. for everybody. Okay. Relatively. Um, well, I'll, I'll belly crawl a little bit and see what's just okay. see what's there. Yeah, it opens up behind the waterfall, actually. To uh, You see clearly uh, what used to be a carved platform that you would stand on, now parts of it have broken away. But there's still a good chunk, a good four or five feet out from the behind the waterfall. Uh, normally, it wouldn't look that... Uh, I mean, it would just look like an old carved platform, perhaps. And it would be interesting, but... Um, with what you know, what you're seeking and looking for, and your other perception check of 15, 
uh, it looks like there is a, a mouth almost. A, hmm. Perhaps a lizard, lizard a lizard folk <laughs> kind of mouth, a big lizard mouth that um, you could put your arm into. <laughs> mm. Why would I want to put my arm into it? Uh, I wouldn't yeah. do it without the key. It's I just about the right the size, is all I'm saying. <laughs> you maybe we should put our elf's arm into it. <laughs> yeah, Abran could fit his arm. You might be able to fit a whole pugil in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, um, can you peer inside let, and before... see if there's a lock in there? Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of can I. Look, you have dark vision. Here. Do I see I any think... sort of luck? I don't have any dark vision. Uh, it's pretty uh, dark. You'd have to have light up here to see in. Okay, all right. <laughs> but I can make out the the lizard. Yeah, yeah. Mouth. You you see okay. it. You know, kind of know after this what you're looking for. It's old, okay. worn down. You might miss it, but because of all the signs, you, you can tell. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go back out, and I'm gonna. Am I still under this fly spell, or do I yeah, need to crawl yeah. back? Through? Yeah, you're good. Okay, you can... I'll just fly. Fly back down, tell them what's up there, and uh, we'll probably need some light and, you know, the big lizard mouth. There might be a hole for a key. I don't know, but yeah, we gotta um, keep the key with can't us. Can't see, no. so we'll need to we need to get everybody up there. Okay. So, you... go ahead, Frank. Sorry. Do you all get up there? Do we all want to go sure. up? I, yeah, let's go. Okay. Okay. Is there enough room for us all to stand on the ledge? There is enough room for you all to stand on the ledge, yeah. Do we bring Morgot with us? That's the question. He, he's yep. like, oh, yeah, I'm okay. I'm sure yeah, we'll have to. Sure. Yeah, well, he's, he's now he's drawing. He's, oh, I see the lizard mouth. I see it clearly. <laughs> he's got a little inset. Oh, you're going to have so much to map, little buddy. <laughs> um, if we shine light into the lizard's mouth, what can we see? You do see something that looks like a throat, but it's shaped suspiciously <laughs> a little bit like a key. Yeah, I figured. Here we go. Here we go. I'll do it. I'm the lizard man. You just, what, what, are you going to just grab the key that I'm you got and shove it I'm in a, there? I'm, say, ask, yeah, ask. Corn cow, let me have the key and I'll... Sure. Here you go. Try it in there. Okay. Um... Everybody, the we're going to keep the twine tied onto it, though. Same confused rock. The lizard head seems... Uh, it's so old. It does seem like it's rock and protruding from it. You're not quite sure if it's fused in part of it originally. It looks, though, like it's one piece of rock with the mountain Is it the it. same metal, metal... Oh, no, no. Is it the same ore as the no, rock? It does or not look the, the same ore. No. Okay. Goose neck, do you put that key in there? Guys? Do it. Do it. Sure. Yeah. Do it. We got a key. We got a lock. What else are we going to do? Sure. Okay. You slide it in. As yeah, you slide as, go you, home. as you slide that key in, you can With almost... my left hand. Oh, your left hand. <laughs> not your not your axe hand. <laughs> not, the my, mouth not my axe main hand. axe hand. Okay. Uh... Yeah, so as you slide your hand in there, you can you can feel, you can hear, all of you can hear, and the probably it's more disturbing to Kay than anyone else. You can hear what distinctly sounds like metal pins like flying down towards the key as you slide it in. Owie. And then sort of relaxing back up as they strike it. You feel like as you put this key in, you're the magnetic parts of the key are pulling in bits of metal pins from all over the place as you put it in. And when you get it mm. finally all the way inserted in, you hear this, you, you hear and feel this sort of solid clang, like all kinds of metal pins have released boom, and are stuck to this key. Cool. I turn. And turn. So you give it a little turn and you feel them all lock and the jaw sort of clamps down. There is this opening in the snout of the teeth that clamp right around your arm, but don't cut into it. So it's like you're wearing a lizard folk snout up to your elbow. God. 
boom in your <laughs> arm. Been that way. You hear this <laughs> grumbling uh, sound behind you as you hear gears start to turn. Uh, and that's, I think that's a good place to end, actually. Ah! All right. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> Your end with the lizard great. caught in a giant cookie jar. <laughs> yeah, our one ar- one armed lizard man. You no, asked. Didn't hurt him when it clamped down. It though, did right? not it hurt just him. Held it, him in place. Yeah, it just okay. held him in place. You asked Kay Aren't about you... every single lock except for this one, which was tremendously amusing <laughs> to me. <laughs> it was a lizard You're like, was... lock. He had... <laughs> You're like a gecko, though, right? You could grow a new arm. Yeah, you can grow a new arm. That's, That's a good easy. question. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, there is where we have to end for this evening with your hand in the lizard folk lock, waterfall lizard folk lock. And that's where we'll begin uh, <laughs> when we get back. Um, marvelous. Weeks. Marvelous. So um, that was fun. Thank you all. I'm going to uh, I'm going to try to get us out of here pre time if I can. So. Um, thank you very much, Reaper Miniatures. Thank you, Sirenscape, for the background and ambient music. And I'll let everybody plug what might be coming this week before I hand it over for uh, where whatever Justin wants to do. But I'll start up, Bobby. I've got nothing to plug, I don't think, unless I'm forgetting something. But I want to say uh, thanks, Frank. That was super fun. Um, looking forward to the next time. And I think that's all I need to say. Okay. <laughs> thank you Dean. yes thank you very much frank i had a great time that was that was that was fun um and i also don't have anything to plug so thanks thanks for everybody tuning in and uh looking forward to the next run this will be fun all right jason well thanks everybody thanks to my fellow players thanks to frank and justin and everybody behind the scenes all the painters uh, the one thing that I would point out, I'm not sure what we're doing on Tuesday for the Crow's Nest yet, so stay tuned. Also, the uh, Pledge Manager emails are going out for the Bone 6 Kickstarter, so watch your email for that and be prepared to... Uh, I guess a lot of people go in first and they, there's a different price listed, but once you're logged in, the price will be the price that you signed up for. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Rhonda. Uh, I'll also say thank you to everyone, including our audience member who very generously gifted a whole bunch of subs. For you. Yeah, yeah that was wonderful. Really wow. appreciate that. Doesn't happen on, on this show very often. Lovely. Oh. <laughs> no. And I guess since the pledge manager is open, I will swatch the new colors on the next Beyond the Press. I was Yay. waiting until people pledge for them before I showed them off. Ooh, so that's something to look forward to. Cool. When is Beyond That's the cool. Kit? Monday. Uh, it starts at 2, 2 p.m. Texas time, I think. Okay, on Mondays. Right. Yep. All right. Ben. Um, had a great time as usual. Looking forward to next time. Thank you all. Thank it's you, late Dan. where I am. It is. <laughs> <I apologize. laughs> Justin, uh, are you there? I'm here. All right. Well, then I will. I will uh, leave it to. Oh well. I'll, I guess my final is thank you to everyone. And um, if you want to look at uh, Nightheart Gaming Show, we have one tomorrow, four o'clock p.m. The Fall Dungeons and Dramaturgy is the group, and we'll be playing a modified version of Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition tomorrow. And I hand it to you, Justin. Awesome. Thank you again, Frank. Thank you to all the artists and the players, everyone behind the scenes as well, excluding myself. Um, uh, have a great rest of your weekend. Uh, we're going to be raiding Holly Monster, and uh, I'll see you folks next week. Bye, everyone. Thank you guys very much. And maybe bye, everybody will be back next time. <laughs>